And hello, hello. Welcome to the stream, everyone. And today we're doing some Chaos Dwarfs. So shout out to Mercy the Mad, Brilliant Stupidity, all the people that do these challenge-style campaigns. Today we're having some fun. I don't normally like doing these because... I don't know. We will know you can spam a certain unit and get a certain result if you are so determined to do so, but... I wanted to do something which I think is a little bit more fun outside the box here, which is purely focusing on the Chaos Dwarfs, not their artillery, not their Goblin Slaves, just the Dwarfs and their Bull Centaurs, which are a mutant hybrid of Chaos Dwarf, really. So, um, with that in mind, this is going to be the focus of this. We're on Legendary Very Hard and just the default campaign settings. So, diving in, turn one, let's see how we go. So, I've got a very, very loose idea of uh, what we're going to do here. Let's just quickly drop the uh, link to the stream, to the Discord, and uh, feel free to join the Discord. It is completely free. No barriers to entry. Let me just uh, grab the link. Sorry, guys. Uh, I've got a very, very loose idea of what we're going to do <laughs> for this particular campaign. So, there's one early, early step, which I think is a little bit contrived, but it should pay off. Okay, so let's give it a go. Let's uh, drop this in. Alright, there we go. So, we are certainly live now, and let's kick it off with turn one. So, we're starting, of course, we'll, we'll join our Lord and Hero together. And we'll fight this first battle on the battlefield just because we can. Let's just warm up with an easy battle. Cool. And uh, it's double checking. Yep, legendary, very hard, all good. Cool. Um, the thing with auto resolve the way it is, you can honestly pass any campaign with any unit composition. I think if it's on normal, um, not the case in Warhammer Two, but in Warhammer Three, the auto resolve is really, really generous. So I think this uh, we could probably auto resolve these first few fights even on legendary, uh, very hard. But I think we might run into a little bit of trouble <laughs> if we do get attacked. We could be really really hurting really soon so that's not what we're after here and uh okay let's uh jump into this uh, so i just finished uh my final exam for my masters for this semester i didn't just finish it i've actually been out and i'm a bit pissed right now so <laughs> if i'm uh a little bit off the mark one might just be because I'm having a bad day, but uh, also, quite possibly, there are other forces at play here. But we are playing, playing the Chaos Dwarfs. Let's get into it. So, Alright, we're going to run uh, Astrogoth here. He's a great caster. And, I, yeah, so these guys are not going to attack us because we hold the advantage. So they're moving up because this guy has such a concentrated power of our balance of power in a single unit. So what we'll do is, this is our version of powerful, of not powerful, goddamn I'm tired, fire, fireball, so burning wrath, we'll get a little bit more uh, efficiency if we hit side on, so I'm thinking let's do that, particularly against these black orcs. Ah, is that all? Come on, one damage, uh, one, one death, you can do better. Uh, they're standing there and taking it. They really are the the only powerhouse unit in that army, though. So right now, back here, we've got our two blunderbuss units and our chaos Wolf warriors. They're going to be the, pretty much the the cornerstone of this particular. Uh, Dan Victory, hey, thanks, man. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I am very, very tired, but it's. Uh, I actually checked my. I'm pretty sure I haven't streamed once this year yet. So I thought. You know what, we've uh, held off on a lot of content. I have lost so much growth potential on my channel for the last, pretty much the last three weeks. Um, I've been having to prepare for this just when Chaos Dwarfs uh, release. So for those who don't know content creation, it's uh, like many things, life's not fair. You can do the same amount of work, but if all the eyes aren't watching, you won't get those results. And it's been, the, but overall, I don't care because it's great for the game. A lot of people are coming back to the game because of the content and that's really what matters. So. 
that's all that really matters. But I would have loved to have uh, been asking, uh, been asked uh, why I haven't made more content. I just have not had the time. I've, uh, would love to have made more, but um, I'd be rushing it out and the quality wouldn't be there. And I've always said, I don't want to be one of those, before I started making content, I've always said I won't be one of those creators that just makes shit just to get views. So I'm trying to, trying to at least uh, hold on to that. Okay. Uh, I've got to pay attention here. I'm uh, messing up a bit. Alright, so we're flanking around here with our bull centaurs, taking out their archers. See if we get those blunderbusses to uh, start shredding their lord. Really great at uh, doing damage to enemy creatures and uh, lords' blunderbusses. Come on, keep shooting. Come on, orcs. And bang. Alright, so they're gonna fall. We know that that's definitely going down. Um, hey, Hawk RG, how you doing, man? If you don't know who that is in the chat there, that is uh, my good friend, it's me, Hawk RG. Fellow creator, and uh, he has been busy during this, um, this uh, recent DLC, so please check out his channel. He's a dwarf main, so... He's getting in touch with his dark side as of late. So uh, scope him out if you haven't already. Hey Alexander Lowe, good to see you my friend. Uh, thanks for all the support in the videos. And for uh, anyone else who's a bit shy, that's hiding back there. It's all appreciated. So what's the time? Fuck me, it's... Uh, it's 20 past 12, and uh, let's see how we go. Come on, guys, give up. It's over. The good thing is, only the goblins are really taking damage, which is pretty much what we're after here. I'm going to move out of the way there. And that's the army losses. Good stuff. Okay, not too many losses there. And we don't really care if the goblins die because that's our mission. So our rules here is we're making a house rule here called priority seating. Okay, so we can have goblins and orcs in the army if they start in there. But the moment that there is capacity for dwarfs, they have to move out. We cannot... Our honor comes first. We cannot keep space in our army for goblins if we can recruit dwarves. So that's that's the standard we're being held to. And I figured that that's um, it's kind of a rule to. I could force myself to disband all these goblins at first, but it's kind of making things painful for the sake of it. Did I kill their lord? I did, didn't I? Cool. By the way, if you see me doing something really stupid on here, feel free, please let me know. I'm a bit pissed right now, so I'll probably miss it. Hey, uh, so it's 1218 from Malaysia. Hey, welcome, welcome. Uh, same time zone, my friend. You aren't using goblins right now? I am, so, but I'm not going to hire anymore. So these guys will be gone in the next couple of turns, most likely. I could, I don't want to cheese any battles. So I'm, I'm trying to make this uh, as quote unquote honorable as we can as a run. Um, we could just dis dismiss all these guys, but we're not hiring anyone. We're not hiring Gordas. We're not doing anything. It's just going to be goblins. Uh, just sorry, just bull centaurs and dwarfs because bull centaurs are dwarfs. They just uh, just a bit wacky. Okay, you could just not increase the capacity. That is true, but uh, we do we will need units if we're going to cover any ground. The other thing is that it needs to be an entertaining stream. We need to have some fun. So I'm going to try something really fucking dumb, and that is, we're going to build our sorcerer building, get the technology which gets us two sorcerers, knock it down, and then start building... Uh, what do we got here? Labor would be good, but I don't want to get eliminated. We're playing it safe. We're playing it like a stream. Alright, so... Normally, I love labor quotas. I love getting more uh, labor uh, due to victories, but 
this is what we're going for here. We're going to, to build up the uh, recruitment Five building for the sorcerers and then knock it down straight after. Uh, well, as soon as we can, feasibly, right? Now... Uh, we can't get there yet, can we? So how many, how many armaments do we need? We need 250. You know what? We'll hold off on that. Let's play it safe. We're going to play it safe. Let's just not get eliminated on stream. We've got a hard enough challenge as is, so we'll stick with uh, a bit of reality. Okay. Uh, Pedro, uh, hey Elvin, uh, hey Hawkeye, uh, Saturday stream after lunch, what a gift. Uh, how's 3.0 been for your campaigns? Been pretty good, thanks man. Uh, I'm enjoying it so far, I think it's... Um, so far so good. I, I actually realised this afternoon I've still been playing on the early access beta till like today. <laughs> so this is my first time playing the actual release version, so... We'll see how we go. I cannot be bothered fighting that. What a result. I wish I'd bought that. that. That's just how it goes. So we'll occupy this one's a factory. We need to start getting some armaments. Uh, artillery also counts. No, no artillery. We don't get artillery. I could also not just increase the capacity. That's true, but then we'd still be using them. So we're, we're going. we'll see how we go. I don't want to bend the rules, but we could have some fun. I'm thinking we should also increase our blunderbusses. All right, let's let's try that. We'll make ourselves very blunderbuss heavy in these early stages. Uh, we need to go down here and improve the melee defense. Get Temple Guardian to get some uh, physical resistance, and then we'll increase his melee defense even more. I really recommend this path for these guys. It just makes them such a powerhouse, and we'll need them as well. So. I'm okay with this, but instead we'll get a second Bull Center Torok because they smash. I probably gushed about them a bit too much in previous videos, but I'm a fan. Alright, I think that's all we need to do. Normally I would build a goblin base here to get uh, Gordaz, but we can't get him because we don't do goblins today. There are no goblins and we need armaments. There we go. So, um, I'll also be doing a bit of testing on the economy. I'm pretty sure I've got a really good uh, steady state idea with the economy, and I'll quickly explain it now. Uh, so, the idea is is I want to make a, a few nice, clear, hard and fast um, rules to the economy that just make it easy to jump in for the first time. And so far in my head, that is. Your first settlement always has a tower, a uh, factory, and an outpost. has all three. Every capital is always a tower. Most people would do that, I think. But um, then basically everything is just outposts. Just go all the way with outposts in anything that's three or four provinces, uh, settlements in the province. And then if there's only two settlements in the province, or sometimes three, that's where you get your factories. But as far as I can work out, if you increase the public order on the outposts, you're reducing your decline rate which is always a percentage, right? So if you jam all of them in there, you're getting the best lack of decline rate, and they're pretty much producing the same thing anyway. So I might be wrong with that, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so... Now let's fight this. Oh. I wonder... I do wonder, if we pin them down, can we, I've not tried this before, I want to try using some attrition and see if we can um, use attrition. We can get another warrior next turn. Let's see how this goes actually. I've never used this in a run before and I would really love to, in my, one of my 20 turn guides, use the fact we get instant attrition on the first turn of besieging and bake that into it. Fuck it, we're only turn two. Let's try it. Let's live dangerously. And that's the thing, if you don't, if you only play with what you know, you never learn anything. So you need to try these things. I think they'll sally out. I think there's a good chance they'll sally out. Hey Blythe, how you doing man? I do need to make you a mod, my friends. Let me see. 
Ooh. Ooh, they sallied out. But there we go, guys. You see that before? That was a loss on paper. And now this is a victory. Now, I've already been given some shit for not killing off my goblins quick enough, so I think it's time to kill off our goblins. Shall we do it? Let's do it. Let's do it. There we go. They're expendable, and we'll build an outpost. Following that rule, your initial province always has all three buildings, because you'll need all of the resources to get yourself off the ground. So, uh, how are we doing? Hey, Pedro, how are you doing, mate? Oh, no, sorry, you've already said hi. Jumping between screens here. It's amazing changes uh, to line of sight, new regions, rearranged provinces, some overall new challenges. Uh, Swazi likes to recruit the lords of the trait that gives more control. Yeah, that's actually really good. There's some some pretty good traits. There's a lot of room for improvement with the AI, but um, <laughs> you still feel like they barely know how to play. Yeah, they do suck on the campaign map. I feel like battles are definitely coming along. Battles are doing really good with the AI uh, in terms of incremental steps forward, but goddamn, it turns into a potato after about turn 20. Alright, we're going to focus, I mean we could go this way more, but let's just focus on getting our Dwarf Boys up. We're having some fun, we're having a Dwarf Infantry Centric game. Let's focus on that, we're using our Bull Centaur, increasing that melee defense. Okay. Now, I don't really want to attack anyone. Now, I will make a 20 turn guard with these guys, so anyone that's watching that hasn't played these guys yet, you can go and attack these ogres here. That can be a good idea if you want to try to rush down um, Grimgore, you can do that. I don't think that's the best idea. From what I've seen, right, even though there's a lot of flak you can get here, we're going to move here this turn, and then the next turn you can move under here, and then it, depending on your difficulty, if you actually recruit goblins, you'll have a full stack, you'll be able to take that, and then you can get yourself a four settlement province and build outposts around this area, and you will be swimming in raw materials. And it's a great way to power up your game. You have an ally here, and then you can start reinforcing uh, Drazoth down there. So that's what I recommend. So make these two your first provinces. I know it seems obvious, but yeah. Um, this guy is by far the most powerful if you, if you play him right, I do think. He's not my favorite, but he's the man. He's the man to beat. Let's knock down this um, Goblin building because we're not allowed to use it due to our house rules. I'm a little bit concerned about our lack of balance of power here. But I don't want to hire more troops because I don't want to pay the upkeep. Let's see who we can do diplomacy with. Now these guys... Uh, they're, they're neutral with them. I'm wondering if... I don't want to sign an agreement with them, which will piss them off. That's my big concern. Uh, it's not really worth it. Let's just uh, let's just chill out for a while. And for the edicts, normally I think reducing the construction cost is a great way to go. But we're kind of camping here for a bit, so let's just get some money. Um, catching up on the chat. Uh, Blythe is doing a Katarin run. I love Katarin, man. She's... She's awesome. <laughs> See, I just hire Elon Musk for the AI. Yes. Hey, uh, Turkey, good to see your streams. Thank you, man. Thank you for joining them. Appreciate you. Uh, Diego93, uh, it's kind of new in total Warhammer 3, but you know the universe of Warhammer? What race is it for me to start with? Um, uh, the, I will do a video on this soon. Uh, the very first campaign I would say is Ming if you only own the base game. This means there's no more expense to you uh, as a player, so you can get the ropes to that. Controversial hot take, right? Everyone says, I'll play while I talk so I don't get too bogged down, but everyone says um, Tyrion and I get that, but I've, I've seen more people quit Total War from playing Tyrion first than any other Lord. Oh, this is tempting. Oh, this is tempting. They do this sometimes, and I do not fucking know why. Can anyone, can it, someone in the chat tell me this, right? So th there's this vampire faction here. They live here. They are at war only with greenskins that live down here. Why the hell do they keep on moving across here? They just, they're obsessed with, I don't get it. I don't get it. They, they do it every time. And until they do, <laughs> until they stop doing so, they will pay for this. 
Now, can we win this battle is the question. Okay, so if we move... So that's my uh, son waking up. <laughs> my missus is on babysitting duty for now. <laughs> oh my gosh. You see, it, I don't think we can get that reinforcement there. If we get that reinforcement range there, that would be amazing. But I really don't want to piss off an angry vampire count. I mean, I do. I mean, if we win this, we are laughing. I mean, he's basically defenseless after that. Oh. What do you guys reckon? What do you reckon, Chad? Should we just attack him? Why is there still a law, an orc labor in the army? Because he hasn't died yet. We don't fire them, we kill them in battle. I just don't think we can win. There's just too much in there for us to do. We don't have enough magic to win that. So we'll have to chill back this time. Uh, we can hire blunderbusters now, can't we? We've gotten out of barracks. Good. We'll get our infernal castellan. This guy gives us extra loot post battle, which I think we'll need. And extra labor. I like it. Done. Now, also, we can upgrade. And we, of course, need raw materials to keep this show on the road. Now, blunderbusters will be the source of our power. They've got pretty good melee defense. Ideally, we'd like one of, one of each. But I think against what we're fighting... I'll go the blunderbuss for now. Then we'll get the dwarf for it next turn. It's getting a bit more benefit from building that barracks when we did. Okay, let's double check. So when we do see um, Kolex, I need to up here. Great ally to have. If he can win the battles across here, he makes a frontier here and gives a bit of protection from Gringor. All right, we're just gonna chill here this turn. Okay, yep. Uh, orcs aren't goblins. That's cool. That I do like that. But uh, I did include orcs in this. Maybe that was a bit racially insensitive to me, saying that all green skins look alike. There's a ruin up the, up that way. In all likelihood, you just watched the Cost Allen run uh, all the way up to uh, the pass with Throg and there's some dwarfs because of it. Hmm. They're running for another big force to position themselves for an attack. Yeah. Now where did they go? I think they... What the hell are these guys doing? They are just wasting away. Okay. Man, I want to fight that. I... This is the, the thing about being on stream, which is... It's a good and a bad thing. I've learned to really like it. But, you know, you can't just experiment here. <laughs> because if you fuck up, you wasted everyone else's time, not just yours. So, if we take him... I know I can win that, but if I don't, we are so fucked. <laughs> We're so, so fucked if I, if I can't pull that off. If I could hire some chaff, we'd easily win that. Do, do you know how annoying it is, guys, to see this bull Taurus here, um, this great Taurus here, and not be able to hire it? Hmm. I could declare war and just hop in ambush stance and hope that he comes this way. I could do that, but he can also go over that way. It'd be fun though. It sounds pretty fun. Overall, uh, you've noticed that the AI will just sprint to the nearest ruin. Ah, uh, I get you. Now I get you. What about the ruins? Do you think ogres would be able to answer Chaos Dwarfs and head-to-head? -head? Oh, you think the Chaos Dwarfs uh, don't have enough cheap anti-large, but you think the ogres can push through? Um, that's true, but the one thing to consider is that there's rivers and mountains here, and you do have the movement advantage. Um, in head-to-head, -head, that can be really obnoxious, as well as heroes. No one talks about how fucking broken heroes are <laughs> when you play head-to-head. -head. If you want to lose friends, play head-to-head -head and use lots of heroes. 
It is, uh, <laughs> yeah. There's a reason why the AI doesn't do a lot of hero actions, is because people were really pissed about it. And it is really fucking annoying. Not gonna lie. Why am I so afraid of this? I'm just worried about what the rest of this stack entails. Hmm. You know what, fuck it, let's, let's just try. Let's just, let's have a laugh. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? We get wiped out. Come on, give me 50%. Give me 50%. Oh, was that 50? Is that in range? Yeah, it's in range. Alright, who are you at war with? Let's get some cheap cash. Let's endear ourselves to these guys, although they're at war with them. That will actually be maybe short-sighted because they hate them. And I really don't want them to hate us. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I've just uh, come back from the flu. I probably shouldn't be drinking, but I'm Australian, it's, it's what we do. Uh, see, this guy already doesn't like us. So I'm not going to get just a bit of quick cash to alienate myself from him even more. It's probably not the right thing to do, but... Or should I just wait? Should I just wait to get... We're gonna be waiting a while to get anything of use though. Or I can wait another three turns. A balance of power is more than his, fuck him. Let's just do it, this is a stream. It's meant to be entertaining. There is desperation in your pitiful eyes. War! All right, we've declared war and we're gonna just sit tight and hopefully a flimsy flip of a coin, 50% ambush actually holds. So short, short sighted. Did I actually say that? <laughs> oh my god, I just got cancelled. I just got cancelled by the Dowie. The Chaos Dwarfs have the holding power and the mass chaff, as says Hawkeye G, to keep the ogres off their range units long enough. Ooh. It's a spicy matchup. I don't know how much this plays into it. We need a Zerkovich or someone to verify, right? But the fact is that the Ogres are tall, the blunderbusses are aiming down, and their infantry are short enough. Can they get direct line of sight and shoot the heads off those, um, those Ogres? Now, where'd this guy go? I'm not so brave when I can't see where he is. Oh, man. Where's he gone? Right, we do need more dual warriors. We certainly do. The uh, sword that will move up. All right, sweet. I should have moved slow. I should have scattered. I'm so used to Warhammer three and Warhammer two. I never would have done that because the map is bigger in Warhammer two. I do hope they expand the map more in the later uh, iterations of the game. Because in Warhammer two, most settlements were like roughly two turns apart so you'd have to move up an ambush stance and you get a chance to intercept them on the field um, that's why there was so much flack with Warhammer 3 when it first launched uh, because it was just settlement battle after seven, uh, settlement battle because all the settlements are only one turn apart so you leapfrog from settlement to settlement so there's not a lot of army positioning uh, we've got you have to fight them twice, half their uh, army will resurrect. Yes, that is true, isn't it? Raised dead ability. Um, Shadowy, all good, asked about it and you answered, saying that they stay till they die, and responded to Squazzy because he wanted to dispel the potential notion of the orcs being chores. Oh, very true. Hey, Crucial, how you doing, man? Um, yeah, it's been a long time since I streamed, uh, but it's good to be here. I'm well, and I hope you are too. Uh, you surfer, how you doing, mate? Good to see you. Thank you for always uh, keeping around. Is your Manfred, Manfred guide? You need a need a promise. Uh, I know it's a terrible promise to make, but it will be done this year at some point. Keep harassing me, and I will get it done. Um, it also has to do with the AI being more cowardly. Yeah, you say that as they run away. Holy shit! Have they just lost everything? Okay. Really, if we wanted to, by the way, if we wanted to, we, we could just cheese and shit, sit here and just attack caravans all day. But I don't think that makes very entertaining viewing. 
Now, because we need arm armament so bad, uh, for those who are new to the Chaos Dwarfs, these two are the two I always get. So the first one will increase your raw material production, other one your armaments. If you can get those two cranking, everything, everything works. Normally, I would probably say raw materials is more important because that aids your construction as well. But all our, our military with the Chaos Dwarfs is held behind armament, so that's where we're going. So I'm losing my voice, so I've had the flu. Now you're going to keep harassing. Please do. Please do. The fact someone cares enough to harass is a blessing, but I feel like you don't say that in a workplace or anywhere. Ever. <laughs> okay. I would love to knock down this barracks just to get um, some of these uh, Chaos Dwarf sorcerers, uh, sorcerers on the ground. So what I need is to build this building, build the two sorcerers, which I can get once I've built um, this research. So always rush this research, guys. You have up here, one sorcerer, one bull center Torok. Very much worth it. And we are very dependent on it. I'm just gonna chill here in good old ambush stance. I hope he's not over there, is he? He's not, this, this guy isn't. Okay. I'm making sure that there are, that, that undead army didn't just sneak around there. Because I will cry if they take my settlement. Okay. So far, so good. You think you're getting Chaos Dwarfs when it's on sale? You're doing an Empire campaign right now on turn 30 and killed all the major problems. That's awesome, man. Yeah, Empire is uh, its a challenging campaign, but I still think it is one of the best campaigns to do as a beginner. And I know I'll get flack for that because it's hard, but there's one thing that no one brings up is that all Total War campaigns are hard. This is a hard game. It does not matter how much you make the order resolve busted and all that sort of good stuff. It takes a long time to get good at, and I think that's kind of the beauty of it, is that it, there's so much to learn. And that's why it's fun. Like, I learn so much from my comments. Um, or people just have a different take on different combinations of things, which make up a different strategy. There is... It's such a great game to build a community around, because it's not just one set way. Alright, so we've got our extra bull centaur. Now we need to do the same and produce our other sorcerer. But we're several turns off being able to build that building. That's really bothering me. Mm. Next turn we'll be able to upgrade this. And I can build a barracks there for two and a half grand. So... I can knock down this barracks if I'm done building Chaos Dwarfs for the time being. And I can because next turn I'll be able to afford 250 armaments. So this is maybe a bit contrived. Oh my god, the the greenskins lost. Oh, they're getting attacked from both sides though. I feel a bit bad for him. That's okay. We'll hire ourselves another Chaos Dwarf. But we don't need the barracks of that, so... This is so contrived, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna knock it down, we'll get ourselves two of these Chaos Dwarf Sorcerers. Uh, uh, catching up on the chat. Vlad von Karstein and Festus are dead. He confederated uh, Gelts and the other minor factions. Dude, you've won the campaign. That's it. That is the Empire campaign done. That's that's the biggest trick of the Empire campaign is that it's not about taking the land, it's about killing the threats. And if you can do that and keep the good characters alive, it's, it's uh, you're set. My lord, a rival power desires a change in your mutual relations. Why did I trust Skaven? That is on me. That is my mistake. Okay, uh, it happened a lot in your very hard campaigns with Orgrim. The order resolve was nerfed twice, once to the hour of cheats, and the second with the order resolve buff to the player. It's Orgrim campaign, it sets you up knowing what you're gonna play. Uh, you find the hour of coward is very much the exception, not the rule. You've seen them throw the army away and order resolve countless times more. 
Yeah, I, th I think that's almost a different issue. It, it's part of the same problem, but yeah, the, the fact that it runs armies into you just to lose that on auto resolve, you're like, thanks. Um, yeah, it does need to be fixed. Alright, so we can spend all of our ornaments on this and in three turns. We will get our sorcerers. Now, this is hurting our cash flow, guys. We're going up behind 250, and these sorcerers, I'm pretty sure, are 250 as well. So that's 750. That's half our upkeep <laughs> on, on the aristocracy. But we don't have anything else we can buy, so why not? Your will. This is Hero Hammer 101. Yes. By sheer desperation and nothing more. Um. <laughs> Let's just hop in Ambush Stance. So, Ambush Stance is a great stance to be in if you have nothing better to do. Actually, we'll build this. And we'll build... Oh, is that too expensive? Alright, we got a gold mine. And we'll upgrade our raw materials. So, you don't need these at level 3, but you want all of your outposts at level 2. They give you valuable out, uh, raw materials as well as gold. So, if you just have a shit ton of level 2 outposts, you'll be fine. And you just need the occasional factory with this building. That's all Chaos Dwarves are. The good thing about factories as well is a lot of buildings, they become less efficient the more you level them up, right? They, well, they will produce more, but the investment to build them up to that tier will be considerably higher. But the thing about armaments, are, are they increase more output of, of armor, of armament, sorry. <laughs> um, the, the more hard they get, so building your factories few and tall is by far the better strategy. Oh, dude, fuck off. Oh, man. We're so unpopular. Oh, no. Oh, we're gonna lose the settlement, are we? Oh, man, this went pear-shaped really quickly. Um... Convoy contracts, excellent. They don't just attack you. Um, you got so used to the Lord being used as base and not being tactical, otherwise they just don't fight you. Yeah, I, and that's the thing is, I, I don't use that Lord bait over uh, ambush ch thing. I just, um, it, it just, just myself, I just don't like to use it. It just feels a bit contrived. But like, as you rightly put though, if they don't attack you, what choice do you have? Like. And that comes to a point where I'm like, that's a that's an AI issue, not something that's necessarily, you know, if if you force the player to play a certain way, then that's a design issue, not a not a anything else. All right, I should have built this guy last turn. I was being stingy and trying to save money, so he can get sundering attacks, which I really do like. So that uh, lowers the enemy armor by thirty, which is quite considerable. What does blood greed do? So builds up his damage over time. Oh, 10% physical resistance. I need line holding. It's by far the least sexy out of all those traits, but I need it. And you can join next turn. I'm worried we're gonna lose that. Actually, we won't lose it, we'll be alright. Oh fuck. <laughs> Man, that's a lot of troops. More dwarf warriors, please, and we will hire those dwarf warriors. We can't do it this turn. We'll hire ourselves a lord. Won't hurt to get some levels on him, and we'll build the dwarf warrior here because we might need him sooner than later. Cool. All right, the heat's on, guys. It's heating up. Uh, that's what you get for going to war with the vampire counts. I know, I know. Yeah, uh, Squazzy, give the rule set a try. Um, oh, dude. Oh, no. Oh, man. I should have asked him to join the war. Oh, dude. This is so bad. No one else is at war with him. Wow, this, I think this will be the first stream I ever get wiped. And you know what? I'm sticking with the rule set. We're going down. Hey, uh, Satan with the internet. How you doing, man? You recently found your video, my videos and binge them. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate that. 
A little bit of greed chasing one army out. Yes, that was stupid. It all came down to the fact I wanted to be fun. I wanted to be cool and attack someone. And it's spectacularly backfired. Okay, so Grimgore is not anywhere near here. <laughs> wow. Here we go, boys. Alright. Next turn we get our two sorcerers. We are getting closer to a full workable army. That is the upside to this. The bad is we have a very dangerous orc and even these guys. I can only hope that they get kept busy by these guys. Now, is there anyone we can sign anything with? This is pretty much as bad as this situation can get. It all comes down to the fact I was... I wanted that. I could have sat here and recruited quietly. But no. Alright, so we've got our, our sorcerers coming next turn. Now this Call to War. Very valuable. Plus four melee defense for all our melee dwarf units. I would have liked it earlier. Usually I get it earlier, but... Well, I will just sort of resolve that because it will give us all that good money. And we will recover next turn. So, labor is something we will need. So, let's take it. Cool. Hey, History Manners, how are you doing? Yeah, I bet you're happy to see uh, Grimgore getting some time in the sun. Good to see you. Thanks for uh, showing up. Uh, thanks everyone for uh, dropping in, by the way. It's been a while since I've streamed. Okay. Give me some burning head. I might keep this guy around, actually. Get some levels on him. Having a second lord with some good levels is always a great asset. I feel like we should double down on this uh, firing drills idea. Well, the only other thing that these things buff... Is, so, one thing about the Dwarf Infantry buffs is that they're not that great. Like, three points to get to that plus six melee defense just isn't that great. Might not have a lot of choice. Let's get... Ashen Storm... Yeah. And North Oki! Okay, increase campaign movement and increase his health on the Castellan and we are all about melee defense and will continue to be for the Centaur Torox. Right, we've got two of these guys now. It's amazing what these having two of these guys will do for us. Gives you some really badly needed mobility. Now we'll upgrade that and that will give us more gold down the line. Sorry about my voice, guys. I had the, I still do a bit have the flu, so. It's actually not really the flu. It's just a really bad cold. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it has been shit though. Not too brave to admit it. Let's hop into ambush dance, and hopefully, a wild Grimgore will appear and give us a tasty defeat trait. All right, Grimgore has the best campaign now. I think it's good that he does, hey. Grimgore's, Grimgore deserves a, a great campaign. Honestly, all the faction leaders, uh, or the key leader of each race, like every race should have that key it lord, that king, that prince, that leader character that has just a really good, not too difficult campaign that has a good ability to confederate, good statesmanship. Uh, Pedro, hey, you should use the lack of supply chains for Chaos Dwarfs and have a... Ca I forgot to do my, um... Convoys as well, thank you. Um, have them garrison the Lord at each uh, settlement. That'd provide you a lot of extra firepower. That's actually a good point, isn't it? They actually, yeah. You got a point. You got a point. So let's go... And these... Are these guys going to attack soon? I can tell. You come Do I really want to peace out with them? Already. 
Is that what I really want? It means I can't declare war in the next 10 turns, and I kind of have the most foul-tempered orc in the realm after me. <laughs> so, you know what? I'm not sending any troops over there anytime soon. Alright, you get your piece. What about you? Master of this class. Tough guy, huh? <laughs> okay. Oh wait, I wonder if these guys, if these guys don't have anyone to fight. So here's a big thing about diplomacy in Warhammer 3, guys. If you, told you haven't seen, talk. if they don't have any How enemies, super easy to convince anyone to join a fight. war. Like, it, it basically takes nothing. The, the unwillingness to join a war is typically because they have enemies. If they have no enemies, they will usually join. Lord so he's about to get uh, wiped out. By Korlek. And next turn, we'll try to team up with Korlek. So this, I believe that this is one of his initial enemies. He takes them. Hopefully next turn, he has no enemies. And we'll get him to solve the Grimgore. We'll save our pennies and we'll throw all the gold we can. <laughs> and get him to tell Grimgore to piss off. Join our Grimgore haters club. Um, we don't have a barracks anymore, do we? Oh man, I really want to get these sorcerers. But I also want to bribe Korlek into helping us out. Oh, that's a good amount. Alright. We're not moving very fast, so we don't really need the control. Since we're building tall, let's go. And... We'll go one. Let's go Hushud. Should we get a Hushud spell? Oh, dude. Hell yeah. Alright. We get some extra leadership for our Dwarf Infantry. Sold. For those that are wondering, I usually like to get at least one... If there's a special law for that race, I always get at least one caster. I just think it's fun. You pay for peace, the vampire counts. Yes. Yes, we did. <laughs> you regret playing League. <laughs> You wish Drum's starting position has changed. Uh, try my best not be offensive. Alright. Alright. Next turn, we will hire. Alright, we, we might live another go. <clears throat> Welcome to the stream, anyone else that's joined in. I think we still have a unit of orcs with us. But, um, so for those that are watching that have seen that we do have some green skins, these are the ones that we started with. I've, um, I had a cool name for the house rule. What was the house? It was... Uh, whatever it is. The, the idea is, is if there is room for another Chaos Dwarf, they must be pushed out. I can't rearrange it deliberately to fit that. If there is room for Chaos Dwarfs, they must uh, be evicted to make room for that. The gods might compel me to kill, but I do it free. Alright. What? I am the Tempest. Now, will you join this war? Yes. Yes. Hell yes. So, because he had no other wars, he had a very little aversion to joining this one. If he had one other war, this would have been out of our price range. So, always keep an eye on your new neighbours, and if they don't have wars, you dictate the terms. Make your own ge geopolitical position. So, this means he's now pushing down on them. And now I wish <laughs> I didn't attack them, or oh, we'll peace out with them, but we can maybe take advantage, and we can underpass, and help them cement this relationship, these guys won't attack us, and we can uh, remove Grimgore and take some real estate. Good. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go this way this game, but you don't always get what you want, do you? These guys are doing really good. They've got four settlements already. You come to us, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Want something only we provide. What you oh, man, that's so lame. They do not want war with anyone told else. You want to talk. How disappointing. What if I, I join your war? Oh, wow. Okay. 
We are only unpopular with some rats that are so far away, we don't want to deal with them. This will increase our blunderbuss firepower. Very important. Alright, let's just check our uh, building options. Now we could recruit more. But what we will do is we need to move up because I am kind of concerned <laughs> that these dirty rats, they're not attacking us and I don't really know what they're doing. I've got no idea. Whilst we could hire more lords around all our provinces, we're still going to be paying for them. So we're better off building up the heroes and getting levels on them. So the reason why we're getting these sorcerers is not for any other reason but to get some levels on them. And then we can disseminate them to other armies and that's how we'll get our reach with our very low unit cap. Uh, that's what we have to do. Surely he's not. Oh fuck, there is a chance actually Grimgore is closer than I've given credit for. I definitely celebrated too early there. The worst counter pick, 0 and 8. Yeah, counter picking is the thing that really turned me off uh, playing multiplayer online. Like, I, I do not get... Why? Can someone please tell me why? You don't just hop into a quick match, you build your army, and you just hit quick match, and you go, pair me with someone and we'll fucking fight. Why? Why is that so bad? Other than that, or maybe you have two armies. Like, you, you have three armies you can choose from. And you can do a best of three, you know? You... We're gonna increase our corruption. Let's just do this. I'm pretty sure our corruption's max, yeah it is. Okay. So our Castellan... It can boost income. Hmm. He is just sitting around here. But, you know, let's, let's increase his uh, combat ability. I'm told you want to talk. How disappointing. I was restless for a fight. Uh, at least he'll give us... You see, here's the deal. If we move out here, it's somewhat of a trap. We're almost best off letting this war go cold, but we just I can't end it. Things. You stick of fear. Good God. Oh. Make easy trade. I can pay my way out of it. This isn't how I normally would like to do things, but if we can guarantee he won't attack us. Fuck it, let's just do it. Let's do it. It's 2,000 gold. Fuck it. Yes. Right. This is by far the most pacifistic I've ever played an evil faction. Normally I'm pretty goody two shoes with the good factions and I go balls to the wall mean with the evil factions. I've been very nice. <laughs> I've been a very, very considerate Chaos Dwarf. Right. I would like this guy to get Burning Head. I saw one more level on him. Once he hits one more level, we're real good. Okay. Can we hire any more to cast dwarfs? Got 400 more. How many dwarfs do we have? I only really need four cast dwarfs in this formation. We'll need more blunderbusses. I'm starting to realise how annoying this house rule I made is going to be. <laughs> it's going to be a pain in the ass. I would love to hire this artillery. Boy, would I love. Uh, I do wonder if a fire glaive, because these guys, because they can stand a bit further back, it might actually be worth it. Got 
kill one more blunder bus. Cool. Okay. Yeah, after Chaos Dwarfs play, uh, it can embrace the inner rat, 100%. Yeah, it could claw. It could claw as easily. I think under anyone's uh, recommendations, a top five campaign in the entire game, without a doubt. Hey, Scaven Dan, welcome, my friend. Good to see you. <laughs> Speaking of Scaven, <laughs> Oh, dude, are you declaring war? All right, well, maybe it was a good thing we pieced out when we did. That has immediately halted our advance on Grimgore. I was hoping to go and curtail Grimgore. Now, what do we need mostly? The Conclave influence would be nice. I'm going to go the Conclave influence. Cool. Okay, that gets us a second uh, upgrade, and of course we want the raw materials. I really can't emphasize enough, these two just set you up so nicely in the early game. Most of your construction here is driven by raw materials, so that will just help us keep churning over. We can also increase our rate of armaments now. Now this building just, it's not going to do much for us. That's the thing about the factories as well, there's not a lot of great choices. But we will need this building to build blunderbusses. So we're bringing it back. Okay. Okay, how are these guys doing? We need to keep one eye on this wall and make sure that the guys who want to win, win. And they're getting their asses probably kicked, but they've clearly got one really good army and Grim Gore. Or he's got less, but hopefully that one army keeps picking its battles and pushes its way through. I would have loved to have tunneled under and just hit him where it hurts, but we won't get that chance until these guys curtail. They'll lose their army, then they'll want to peace out. Will you join our war against either of these guys? Grimgore's too powerful, too scary. What about Driven Fangs? They probably just pieced out with them, which is why they don't want to do it. Okay. Well. It's kind of the turn. It's kind of where it's going to sit. We need to upgrade. Oh wait, we can, we can knock this building down. And we can get a, the gold building to increase our revenue because we're just a little bit behind. Let's get us in front. Okay. Alright. Congrats on AK. Oh yeah, we got AK. Uh, thanks, everyone. That's uh, really, really appreciated. And to anyone new or old, uh, thanks for still sticking around. You want to play Grimgore and you decided that you're just going to get run down by every faction beside me. That's the point. Crush the wall. Uh, you can't... Recruit artillery manned by dwarves. What does the chat think? I could throw a poll up here. Oh, I feel like such a boomer on this shit. I could, where the fuck is it? Start a poll. Alright. Do. Does. Artillery. Count. As. Dwarves. Feel free to, to uh, throw in your own two cents there, guys. If you if I'm being silly by not using artillery, let me know. But I originally thought that this was just going to be um, dwarfs and bull centaurs, which are just mutated dwarfs, really. But uh, I'll leave that one to the masses. Hmm. If this is bad news. Alright, we need to scout out. We've got a shitload of heroes. Let's start using them to scout. We're just sitting on our hands now. We could be doing some damage. Um, Alright, 
Oh, we'll get Scott to stand here. We've got no one attacking from the north there. We're actually pretty secure. These guys aren't going to make it to us. What? Unless they take them out. And that is possible. These guys are still at war with them, so they're not completely unoccupied. We are safe enough to move our army down here. We could take that, but I'm worried that we can't finish the job. That's the problem. We also come into contact with new new enemies here. We really are cheering um, Kolek on. It looks like he's doing alright. So far, so good. I will hear you. And how many settlements do you have? He's got five. Man, Kolek. Your vassal's gonna break free from you soon, mate. You, you're lacking in authority. Minus five for settle armies. We're gonna have expensive armies. I'm down for that. Before I spend all my armaments, um, I can't remember what the other buildings cost. Can we get any more dwarfs? We can't. What are the... So, the chat thing, 83%. Believe that it's dwarfs. You know, I think that's a pretty good compromise, though. Hell cannons are manned by dwarfs. That's the thing. That's what teased this whole faction for people. So, maybe we can do that. We can do that. For now, though, let's get some gold. And we need to keep the momentum up. We do have to keep this interesting. Can't play it too safe. If we just come down here and destroy their armies, it'll get things moving in the right direction. So let's just do that. Let's move down here. Move our second lord down here. Alright, research. Uh, we will get this now because we don't really need too much more. Right. <laughs> need to smash more to get more armaments, 100%. If the guy's loading and shooting at dwarfs, uh, yeah, then yes, I like that. Vassals won't break free from the Chaos Dwarfs, having a dark fortress makes the, that an awesome vassal. Yeah, no, no, but I was just thinking like. Um, just the reality of it, he's got one, one settlement. I know it's a fortress, but still. <laughs> Use Arty, it's fine. There are no rules for Skaven, are there? <laughs> okay. Alright. To the rear echelon. What does that mean? Don't really need that, but labor... It's harder and harder to come by. Hello? Is for you? Well, <laughs> if that doesn't look amazingly easy to be. Do we have any followers? Let's check our equipment, guys. Can we get any funky followers that will increase our ambush chance? And we can't. So. Always getting close. It's getting a little bit close there, so what we'll do is we'll put this guy. You know, I was ragging on ambush baiting before. Uh, don't have a lot of choice here. And if this guy wasn't here, I would ambush bait him. Anyway. I'd ambush him anyway. You know what? Both of them could be an ambush. Increase our odds. Uh, casualty replenishment 5%. That's pretty good. Just double check. Is there anything economically we could use? We're not really starving for labor at this very point, but we may need to fight lots of battles, making that casualty replenishment really valuable. Double check our deals. Everyone hates us. It's good to be us. Next. The only artillery that isn't uh, chorf is the mortars, which ogres use to load them. Ah. Has anybody tried to cheese the Tsar Nagran's uh, settlement as Chaos Dwarfs to get to a tier 4 or 5 early game? 
That technically is possible. Um, the speed rush to tier 4, tier 5 is definitely more of a late game thing. In the late game, once you hit turn 70 or 80, you'll have so much Conclave influence because you will have roughly finished the tech tree by then, the uh, whatever you call it, the tower. Once you finish that, you have nothing else to spend it on, and you you snowball with the Chaos Dwarves more than almost any other faction. Skaven are strong for a similar reason, but you just have nothing to spend this on. You just keep on building tier 5 provinces all the way around. And whilst your military still isn't directly tied to that, tier 5 provinces or, or capitals are really hard to take down. So it basically means that you're defensively untakeable as you expand through the map. So, oh, sorry, Russ. So it's more of a subtle way of just being crazy powerful in the late game. Alright. So he's gonna run from the first time. And that's okay. Can we catch him afterwards? I think we can. Please don't declare war on me again. Okay, I'm worried that we'll accidentally block him and we won't. Good, so we're going to move our sorcerer in here to make sure he gets experience. Great. And let's finish this army off. Should be an easy auto resolve. You guys want this on the battle or should we uh, just do it? He's talking about siege. Uh, it's Cheesing the siege battle with stealth units. Ah, oh, that's actually a good point. That's a good point. I've seen it done with Grimgore. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Dan. Victory. Yeah, I missed the point in that question. 100%. Yeah. Uh, watch uh, Legend of Total War stream with Drazoth. Um, he does some really good stealth, stealth work with the goblins with that. I forgot how good they were. I f yeah. Good shit. Really good shit. You know what? Oh, it'd be pretty fun. It'd be fun. Fuck it. Let's have some fun. Ah, oh, sorry. Sorry, man. I literally just saw that. You've got a little orc lady over a unit, which contradicts your title. Alright. Next poll question. I'm abusing this little system for sure. This is officially the favorite poll question I've ever asked. Come on. I already have a poll. I know, but I want a new poll. I don't want that poll. End poll. Okay. All right. Sacrifice the orc. Orcs first, or not? So, do I feed the orcs straight to the enemy, or do I do a well-rounded formation and try to use them protectively as a as an offensive infantryman that doesn't take the front charge, that flanks around the sturdy chaos dwarfs that should be manning the front line. So this formation is up to you people. They're the they're the the uh, laborers are. Their fate is up to you. Eighty-six <laughs> percent. Fuck me. Oh jeez. It's not a good day to be. <laughs> the Dowies are watching today. I'll see these blunderbusts do their work. 92%! Oh, you poor bastards. Alright. You are the pawns. Alright, we'll try to get some good camera shots. Alright. For those who care, F in the chat. Gentlemen. I'd say it's been an honor. But the Dowie Zark cannot stand you. 
And if it's not this, it's the furnace. At gunpoint, the Dowie's ass snarl and menacing limb force them to charge forward. Do we have a... Where's the sorcerer? Ah, oh, I don't have my fire sorcerer. Wait, there they are. Nice, we get reinforcements up here. Nice. It's always a good day to sacrifice orcs. <laughs> oh, 89%. Oh, that is funny. Those laborers had good piercings. That's all they had. That's all the good they had. Thank you, uh, wise mystical tree. That was fun. That was very fun. Okay. We'll bring this, uh, this guy up the front. One thing that's great about the Chaos Dwarves though, that makes a, a game mode like this really strong is that these guys are very powerful in terms of their characters. They are like up there with the high elves in terms of the power of their characters and what they deliver. Oh, here we go, guys. Wow. You know, actually, pull back. Right? If they're going to die, they need to be bodies that allow the blunderbusses to do their work. Right. Cut back, guys. Get back. Oh shit, didn't even see these guys. They are hacking those trolls though. Alright. Let's pull them back. Come on, get out. Get out. Alright, orcs, charge! Walk! Alright. Alright, we're gonna charge these guys up here. Move down. And we'll get a nice big fanning shot with these guys. Oh, wow. That's really funny. The Chaos Dwarfs, um, the laborers are actually going to make it. I'm going to try to pin these guys still with these, uh, with this bull centaur. Get in there. What do you got for abilities? Routed. Good. That's right, this, this army will fold up really quickly. Good. Slow him down the retreats. Alright, the fight's over. Can we start this guy down? Ciao. Ah, oh, he got overcasted. These guys aren't breaking. Oh, let's give him some flaming attacks. A bit more damage. Who isn't breaking? Come on, guys, get the memo. It's over. There we are. Uh, that has three sp uh, projectiles here overcast. I actually didn't have a look, eh? Hey? I'm still a bit tired and a bit pissed. <laughs> oh no! He's getting away! How did this guy get away? His name's Dusty, no wonder why. Come on. Mate, if this bull centaur can catch him, 
Just didn't get a goddamn medal. Probably should have auto-resolved this thing. We would have done better on the auto-resolve. Oh, we didn't even kill the bloody orcs. Sorry, guys. One job. One job. Alright, next, next time we make sure the orcs die. They will be given an unceremonious end. To that, we are sure. To that, we are sure. Okay. That's good. We'll, we'll make sure we do another battle sooner as well. I felt a bit flat in that one. That was not a good performance. Right. Clean them up, boys. That'll do. Alright. Alright, well, we will feed them and sacrifice them appropriately next battle. Yeah, we would have uh, gotten a lot more gold. They do need to fix that because at the moment there's so much more incentive to auto-resolve your battles and fight them simply because you get all the gold, all the experience. Whereas in Warhammer 2, the only real consideration was the losses you would take. So, and the current auto-resolve gives you really good results. So that's the problem with auto-resolves, that there's not enough incentive to fight the battles. And Warhammer 2 did that really well. Was It was a case of... I can accept maybe, you know, 20% more losses, but I don't have to fight it, which I think is pretty good definition of what auto-resolve should be. But you do need to double-check that uh, Hashut spell, though. That'd be a big step up. Because I've noticed that with a couple of the Hashut spells, um, when overcasted, they really step up what they do. Two hundred labor is pretty good, but we're burning through it at a good rate anyway. Uh, that's good. We can always uh, trade them for gold. Okay. Burning head, yeah, boy. And our sorcerer, another fire sorcerer. We need to mix these guys up. Yep. Okay, increase movement. That will really help in subsequent turns. And increasing. Actually, we don't want that. We want bow seeker. Although Bulgor's pretty good too. Oh, that's nice. Let's get that. That's fine. Cool. And that sorcerer. This one's a Hashut. But I do like Ashstorm. As soon as we get a few more guns in the field, Ashstorm is just amazing. Overcast does do three projectiles instead of one. The move is really strong for its cost. Thanks, Lane. Appreciate that. Well, there we go. Now we know. We can take that. Might be a tough fight, though. Could be a tough fight. Man, if they attacked us up as though, we'd be fucked. Might as well upgrade that. Okay. We'll just hold on to everything else. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you took uh, Zad Nagrons at turn 16. Pretty tasty, but you're not sure if it's going to be worth the beef with the rest of the Chaos Dwarfs. I think you will have a very hard time. I think the Chaos Dwarfs will be pretty unrelenting. Your only real saving grace is that they do have some heat. And that's a peace treaty. Ah, uh, sorry, not aggression. Ooh. Now why? Why are you offering me that? Why not? I've got no interest in going north. It's not going to alienate me too badly with anyone else that's there. Oh. Another battle. 
we could shred these guys, but I really want... That's a lot of experience for all these characters. We're going to have to retreat back, though. We're, we're going to play the slow steady game. Man, that's a really good result. That's a really good result. Overall, no replenishment. That's fine. A thousand gold. We can do something with that. There's research for diplomacy boost. Yeah, there is too, yeah. The uh, what? Oh fuck! They're coming for us, guys. They have three stacks coming for us. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh fuck! This could be it for us. Oh no! Ah oh, fuck! This is winnable. Oh man. <laughs> that is. Oh. But if we win. The worst thing is, right, even if we win, we don't have enough forces to go take their capital. I do have Burning Head. They both have Burning Head. I have a fragment of an army and they have a some very heavy cavalry. The most dangerous thing of course is their lords. I do have blunderbuss units. We're gonna have to castle up really, really tight and make sure we prioritize those lords. Bit late for Legend of Total War to be watching, but <laughs> this one could be coming back to you, brother, if you do see this. This could be a pretty damn decent uh, saving a disaster, but it's not hard enough. I think he'd piss this in. That sucks. That does suck. The reinforcements coming in from the side. What's that do to the time? Four minutes. Do I think I can live four minutes? Do we have four minutes of life at us? Yeah, oof. Good luck. You don't think I can win this? Alright. Desperate times, desperate measures. I reckon we have to... If we go in the corner, the most cornery of corners... <laughs> Gotta wait two minutes. But they have reinforcements too. Now, there's no nooks or crannies in here to work with. That's the worst part of this. This we can use. Fucking trees here, that's the, the problem. Everywhere there's uh, good, good defensiveness. What does this do? How long would this take? It's gonna take like 10 minutes, five minutes. Well, maybe we can hide like a little bitch and that might work out for us. Alright. This is going to be a fun battle though. If this doesn't work, I'm so normally, as if you know, I'm normally not a safe scammer. This looks like a fucking fun battle that can be won. I'm willing to try the fun thing here, which is to see if they, we can get them to wait until... Oh shit, they're coming. Oh, they're coming, Mama. <laughs> oh, fuck me. You can do this. Thanks, Dan. Only four minutes left. Ah. Yeah, we'll be retrying this. I gotta say, for a couple of short dudes, you've done a pretty shit house job of hiding from the enemy. got so many wins of magic though I can tear through them with burning head. What do I got left? Please, please, please hold off. Hold off. 
hopefully, what I'm hoping right is that they will hold off until their reinforcements come. They will lack the confidence to engage until they know they've got the numbers to win absolutely. I would love to launch a burning head down there, but if I do, they'll, um, it'll piss them right off. It's not gonna happen, is it? Really not gonna happen. <sighs> Even this, it's just not a great angle for Burning Head. I mean, we'll get some good, good damage off there, but I'm more hoping it slows them down. Ah, uh, no. Nah, the, the others would have been on the field now if we'd actually launched another side. The vampire found the poop socks in the wood, I know. They found us. Nah. This one's done, guys. Sorry, we'll have to give us another go. Oh, they're so close. Only a minute away. No. Yeah, it's over. It's over. Um, we'll give it another go, eh? Oh, it's it's a tight fight. It can be done. It can be done. It can be done. The thing is, if that had worked, though, it would have been really, really well done, I think, because would have been able to castle up against that wall, use a couple of our heroes to pin the zombies in place and hopefully get a clear line of sight with our blunderbusses. Because one thing is, we can deal fire damage and we can really, really roast their characters. Let's try again. Sacrifice the hero with only fireball. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, sorry, this has already been asked. Yet step out for a while. Uh, what's my opinion of chorfs? Um, I think they're pretty fun, man. Um, I I always liked Chaos Dwarfs before this, so there's that bias of already liking the race before playing it. But I think overall they're pretty good. Uh, I think the price rise. Do I think this is a the step up or the innovation that the Tomb Kings were at that point in time, I don't think so. Um, I think it's one of the best races to play in the game in terms of um, what it delivers. They're one of my favorite races to play without a doubt. Um, that's what I think. I think uh, if they released this at the same price point, you'd be like, this is fucking amazing. It's just because when you increase the price, you increase the expectation. I think that's that's my honest uh, thoughts on it. Do I think it's worth getting? Um, the truth is, if you like Warhammer, it's a it's good, good campaign, a good rounded race with a bit of a different take on it. If you like more of the more of a good thing, then it, it certainly isn't the exact same copy-paste of another race. So, yeah, it's the, one of the things, if, if you think that it looks like you would enjoy it, you'll enjoy it. If you don't think you would and you're getting it just because you've heard the campaign is amazing, then yeah. Alright, so... What we'll do is we'll send this guy. Oh, you know what we should have done? We should have thrown the other guy the other direction. I see what you mean. Should we just restart and try to send this guy out the other way? How long does this have to go? Oh, I don't think it's the last minute. I think we'll be able to hold off till then. That'd be great. Mm. Yeah, it's a pretty fun race. Uh, pretty direct upgrades, normal dwarfs. Yeah, it does... It, 
there's a lot of cool mechanics in here that I do think that should be passed through to um, like the slave mechanic for Dark Elves. This is such a good slave mechanic. I, I really, really like it. It, it basically, the, the blandness of the old slave system in Warhammer 2, but not as restrictive and limited, That I feel like they really nailed it with this one. They should definitely, uh, if they release another DLC for Dark Elves, they should completely renovate it then. Now the problem we have... Is we don't really have any good spots to kind of go from here. But they've been way less aggressive this time. I hit them last time and they... They ran away. Okay. The train is fun to use, uh, from what you saw. Yeah, 100%. And here we go. Alright. Three, four, five. Come on, come on, come on. Alright. Oh, I've got our lucky uh, orcs here. Uh, why do I get the feeling they're just going to run off the field and they'll be the only ones that survive this disaster? Okay. Oh, I think we're a bit fucked, guys. I think we're quite fucked. <laughs> we're so fucked. Okay. The power creep bothers you, they're really point, uh, painting themselves into a corner with so many factions um, failing. Yeah, I don't necessarily think some factions are, are falling, but they do need to, to definitely... Yeah, for those that want to really rip on the Chaos Dwarfs not being that innovative, this, one, this DLC has been the one that's made the older races feel a bit older, I do have to say. Right? The, the original Dwarfs didn't feel dated until then. And the thing is though, they're still fun to play. They're still really, really fun to play. The thing is, the the armaments mechanic, that should be how Oath Gold works. Oath Gold should work exactly like armaments work now. You should be able to pimp up units in the exact same way. Oh, we're gonna lose our army here. Oh, here we go. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. Let's do it. Come on. Don't know what they're doing. That's good. And the Grave Guard. It's one of the most valuable units they have. At least we damaged that. Okay, good. Felbat's going down. So we're not afraid of anything really except for their lords. Their lords are very terrifying. Come on guys, keep it together. Alright. Alright, come on Benny here baby. Let's do it. Damn it. Damn it, should have been lower. 
still that helps it all helps oh, if that was lower man that really would have helped Okay, we're gonna send these guys up because I cannot afford. For this. If this guy routes, we are totally fucked. Alright, let's tread those zombies. Okay, where's that next uh, burn head gonna be? In situations like this, think of your next spell and where it's gonna go before you fire it because you won't have a lot of time. Oof, come on. Hopefully that works. Come on. Alright. Alright, bring out the big guns. Let's charge, bro. Let's do it. Give them fire attack, fire attacks, but might not be enough. Okay, come on. Oh, those blunderbusses are wrecking in the sky. Come on, keep it up. Come on, man, they're so good at taking down single units. Should have got a bit more of an angle on that burning head. All right, that's one down. Beautiful. Oh, we're getting some serious crumbling here on these, uh... Fuck, there we go, there's the can rates. That is a risk. Alright, they're crumbling apart now, this is good. Alright, stay focused, stay focused. Alright, that flank is just broken. If we can get a burning head up here, it might restore that flank. Although I'm thinking we need to... We need to win this front. Come on. Come on, gun it down. Come on, get him. Fuck, this is gonna be tight, guys. So, so tight. How much more wins and match do we have? Not much more. I don't have a good line there to, to land. Alright, take down the graveyard. Come on, come on, come on. Hold it together, gang. Hold it together. I don't want this guy to die, but... Oh, that black knights. Fuck, we need everything we can get. I'm trying to force the army losses, if you can't tell. It's not the most valuable units, but... Oh, it's not enough balance of power in those things. That was possibly cost me the battle. I'm not targeting the right unit. Come on, guys. Come on. Right, they're fall faltering. Shoot, what the fuck are you doing, guys? What are you doing? Why are you running towards them? Don't run towards them, you assholes. What are you doing? Uh, is that the best way to do it? Yes, it is. Got to do something. Come on, guys. Just die. Just die already, please. Break the graveyard. Break him, come on. Run. Come on, we can gun down this graveyard. Oh, the problem is that their lords are still alive, and that's where all their power is. Speaking of lords. This is a long shot, but if we can gun this guy down, 
We are. We can win. Crumble. Crumble. Come on. Hold him still. Come on, Astigoth. Come on. Alright. Come on, get him down. Get him down. Get him down. Come on. You got a straight line of sight there. So Blood Knights, Heavy Cavalry, come on. That, that's worth a lot. Yes, another Lord down. They're crumbling. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's catch up on the chat. Uh, where are we? Uh, do, do, do. Is it possible to revive Gordaz if lost in battle? Yeah, Gordaz is a legendary hero. He is immortal. Oh, sorry, that gets answered by the chat. Sorry, guys. <laughs> You're done for. Biggest Dickus. I have a very good friend in Rome called Biggest Dickus. If you make a guide, uh, make Vampire Coast the one for Vampire Counts so you can play both. I would love to do a Vampire Coast guide. They take so long to make, which is why I don't make them as often as I do. They just take a really long, long time. You proved me wrong. <laughs> nice done. That, that, was, that was tight. That was, that was very, very tight. Um, that goes to show understanding your enemy and understanding where their power is in their lords. Um, if we just aim to, to kill, clear off all the chaff then and didn't kill those lords when we had the opportunity, we would have lost. Oh, we lost so many of our characters. Oh, was it worth it? Was it really worth it? Oh, it's so rough. I mean, we didn't lose the whole army, so... I mean, you gotta take that, I guess. Bit of gold, bit of. Uh, we're gonna have to rehire this, these these units, so maybe we need the gold. Shall I get replenishment? Oh, thanks, chat. Thank you, everyone. That was <laughs> that was work. Um, and I need to send these goddamn convoys off. I keep forgetting to do it. I got this like turn five. <laughs> ADD one hundred and one. Fucking turn. It's taken me 14 turns to launch my first convoy. Useless. And we're going to choose the one which has the least goblins because these uh, Chaos Dwarves are very uh, unprogressive. Oh, which one has the... Someone throw out a, a good... I think uh, Drakenhof has it really good. A really good, uh, good prize. But I need my armament, so it's a bad idea. Did the orcs survive? Did the orcs actually survive? Are you kidding? After all that, those goddamn orcs I've been trying to kill for about... Since this campaign started, still survived. Goddamn. Okay. Uh, well, you know what? I'm just going to play for the armaments, uh, for the raw materials, and that's going to give us that. Yep. So help us level up our settlements. I know it's not going to give us the best... Um, Hey, uh, what a tough challenge. Yeah, it's, uh... Overall, it's going okay. It could be going really, really badly. Oh, man, I so want to take your shit off you. If we didn't get attacked twice in the same turn, I would have your capital, you bony assholes. Okay. Let's calm down and get up here. Well, thank God we brought this second lord with us because it would have been pretty rough otherwise. Uh, throw you in there. 
I think the replenishment might be better with him, so with Astagoth. Boosting the gun fire on our blunderbusses, I will say, played a role in the success of that battle. It's not often where it's really decisive, where that makes a massive difference, but I think it did there. I'm also going to upgrade my Chaos Dwarf Warriors because they held the line like absolute champions. Oh, no, get it, Blunderbuss unit. <laughs> the funny thing is, we only lost the units I really wanted to save. And. <laughs> I'm kind of getting attached to these guys. Alright, whoever throws in the chat throws the best name for these guys. It's got to be chat appropriate. You can allude to things, you can't say them. Um, actually, don't even allude to it. Someone will take that too far. But give us a good name for these uh, orc laborers. And uh, we'll see if the vote to sacrifice them goes. For those that are new to the chat, we're not allowed to hire anything but dwarven um, units and bull centaurs because they're dwarfs. We're trying to kill our basic laborers and we... The amount of valuable units we lost. Oh my god, did we lose a sorcerer? We didn't lose a sorcerer, did we? We lost one sorcerer. Fuck. The reason why that's a, a pain is because we lost our... I, I knocked down the building where I could build them. Post battle loot is something I can get behind. Ooh, charge reflection, that's nice, but... These guys will typically be doing the charging, so it's not that useful. Alright, level 1, and starting again at level 1. Getting more materials is always nice. 10% upkeep reduction for, inter for Infernal Guard. See, whilst increasing armaments does sound like a really great buff... You know what, fuck it, no. The thing with Chaos Dwarfs is you end up with heaps of gold, you don't end up with a limited armament. That's the better way to go. Low budget immortals. Yeah. Nice. Ha! Huh. Sporkticus. What is that off? What is that off? I know what that's off. Is that off this game? Did, didn't, isn't that the name of one of the, the orcs? That the devs named as a throwaway faction. Well, the good thing is we have Burning Head again. And let's be honest, Burning Head is what won that battle. Movement, and we'll keep upgrading him. That's good. At least the Lord survived. That's that is something. That is something. I don't know. Should we? Is there even any point upgrading that? Yeah, I guess there is. We're not going anywhere, are we? Okay. Check diplomacy. You guys want to peace out? Didn't think so. You want some more? Okay. You know what? We need some more. We need some more infantry. We need some more guns. We need a lot more of everything. We can't make it home anyway. One Yeah, they won't try that. Okay, well, we're okay. Grimgo goes rawr. He does. Yeah, we'll call him Spooked. Oh man, we got under Undercity. It's a fun campaign though. I'm, I'm digging this. Thing is, if we did, if we had the the elf, uh, it's not the elf, the goblin laborers, we would have wiped these guys already. We'd wiped. Well, we would have had the troops to wipe the vampires, and then probably move down there. We might have been caught out because Grimgore de declared war on us, but I think we'd be okay. I think we'd be having, we'd be owning all of this, but we'd be struggling between Grimgore and Tretch attacking us at the same time. Unless we could 
join Treacher's War with Imrik. Which is the way I'd probably recommend playing this. Yeah, if you want to cheese this campaign, you can just keep on killing caravans <laughs> endlessly. One thing about encamp stance, guys, is it meant isn't meant to give you Yeah, so it doesn't give you a boost to replenishment anymore. I was wondering if that was actually ever a bug or what they were going to readdress that. But Noturia looks like Kazakh flag. They're just going for a blanket replenishment rate. Okay. We could get fire glaives. Getting that 10% reduction would be really nice right now. Wish we had it. Twelve fifty, and then we can upgrade that, and that'll give us an extra castellan, and that will be very nice. Two thousand will give us upgrade there. We're increasing as many raw materials as we can already, and we're getting some raw materials from the convoy. Let's get another convoy going. Uh, oh, we can't get one yet. I think that's everything we should do now. Okay. I would really, really like to get some fire glaives because they can stand a little bit further back. Adding another layer of firepower. We can make some fun formations with them too. I just don't want to send us broke. Alright, let's let's just get everyone back to good health. I'm doing this to get us uh, healed up a little bit quicker. <laughs> the expendables. Oh, I do like that. That's good. Fire for biting. That's good. Da expendables. I do like that as well. Medad. Alright. Alright, that's, that's it. Dark Expendables, I like that. You know what's funny is they're going to get to like tier 7 and you guys are going to be like, nah. You can eat with us. You deserve a place at our table. Oh, unit of man eaters. For a thousand gold. Wait, that, that's a pretty boss army. That army's not getting fucked with. Nah, get lost. I'm too poor. Really looking forward to seeing the game finish. If Sarah can overhaul the older factions level quality of this game, it'll be one of the greatest strategy games of all time. I could not agree more with that. To be honest, it kind of already is. But I know what you mean. That, how good is that though? That we can see the potential that it has. And I think they'll get there. That's one thing that these guys that CA do better than Games Workshop is that they try to make sure that the creep doesn't get too bad. If anyone's ever played tabletop, this creep is now bad. Okay, so we'll put him in ambush stance so he doesn't get targeted. And each time we're in ambush stance, we have a chance to get that ambush to trade. Really helpful stuff. Okay. An extra Infernal Castellan would be good, but that's a lot of turns spent. We can reduce our armament cost for our infantry, which will be useful. That will be useful. But it's not what we need right now. Getting to that is pretty good, which will increase our armaments. Really not too much heat on us with the Chaos Dwarfs yet. 
Alright. I'm enjoying this uh, these few turns to build up our our gold because we don't have too many units. I'll have your soul. Now they've got tier, a tier three structure, but they're recruiting quite slow, so they're a minor faction, so they're they're taking the time. And that's okay. It is tempting to get another Bull Centaur Rando. They have served us pretty damn well, and we get a... What is it? 15% uh, ward safe on them, so they do more than just stand there and look pretty. But they're expensive. 300. 300 gold. Fuck, 350. So expensive. Oh well, let's think about it. That is true, actually. The release of Dwarfs has, uh, Chaos Dwarfs has seen the quality of everything substantially increase. I think that's a fair thing to say. The game is playing better. Definitely. Taking a while. Oh, I forgot to rename them. I will rename them, by the way. That is. That is great. I'm not going to want them to die. Where are they? Not sure where they're. Do you mean those guys at every race could have two minor settlements like factories? I don't think that that should be the case. I think that that depends on what type of race they are. Um, I think having a complicated settlement system is something that should be something that some factions get, um, but I don't think it should be standard. Like otherwise, like Total War Attila, great example. Lots of crap in the game, but one tenth of it is useful, and it's just contrived. Like when you have to add what this will do and take it away to that extent, you just everyone just finds a good rule of thumb and they spam that rule of thumb. So you, your your quantity of choice is actually diluted by the fact that people try to find shortcuts. That's just my take, at least. Right. Let's first move uh, this guy down. I would love this guy to die, but he won't really. But we can get him to join. Here we go. This is how we do it. Ah, uh, he won't join that battle, but will you join this? You won't do that either. Hmm. It's because he really hates us. Can't do anything about it. He is going to come. Oh fuck! Hi. Forgot about you. What's up? Got a bit of a bit of a little war there. Well, in light of this news, maybe we should do some recruitment. Let's get... What's our cash flow look like? We have... Oh, we can handle a bit more. How many blunderbusses do we have? Uh, one, two, three, four... Can get a couple more. They're pretty cost effective for what they're delivering. Let's go. How much more is one of these? Quite a step up. But they also have a good amount of defense on them on the back. Let's mix it up. Let's mix it up. We can have some fun with that. Oh, I don't even have the bloody barracks to do it. Oh man, I'm definitely tired. That was so dumb. Oh, my precious armaments. I can't even use them. But that's alright, we'll get this instead. 
We can get the blunderbuss. Okay. Double check our diplomacy, and there's nothing we can do with at least anyone that we want to. So if this guy attacks us, we'll win this. So I'm not too worried. What the skull crackers could do is underpass, and that could catch us. Research tree that requires uh, spending influence. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I think that'd be a good way to use it. Yeah, I, I really like the the way the influence currently works uh, diplomatically um, and the way that it's used to get better units. Like the influence system for the high elves, I think is perfect. I love the way that it works, but I think baking into the research tree, that'd be nice. So the scale takers are already gone. Which is great. Now, they backed right off. They've got... Now, Grimgore is winning that exchange. And that is a concern. I need to burn down this undercity. I think it's worth taking that. At least this gives us a secure border on this edge here, so... Uh, let's just move down here. Move there he is. There's that army. Fifteen. Sixteen. But I've got better units. We can win. We're going to move here this turn. Where's 50%? Cool. Alright, ambush stance. Return him to the army. Looking good. And we can hire some more units. So watch our upkeep, guys. We don't want to go broke. We can easily send our economy going backwards now if we get too heavy handed with uh, our costs. So I'm going to leave that just like that. Okay. Oddly enough, another Infernal Castellan would be really, really nice, and we can't afford to run out of ammo, so I'm actually down for that upgrade. How's the chat doing? Early stage Portus. Yeah. It's definitely a thing. Actually, wait a sec, did I miss out on... Temple Guardian, I love this. Passive ability is 15%. Physical resistance, really nice. They need to find a way to prolong the campaign so it's still reasonably challenged past turn 50. The big, one of the big ways they've addressed that is by preventing confederations. I reckon the game developers they inherited the system from Total War, Rome 2 and Attila. I reckon they regret so badly that confederations were built at the game because they are the most difficult thing to uh, to balance in the game because the moment you get it, you just own so much territory. It's just an instant snowball. But I think the, the new allegiance system is the way that they're trying to move the game so it's not so much... You confederate factions that are about to die, but you more work on military alliances so you, your turns don't slow down too badly. I think a mammoth is pretty badass. Yeah, I'm willing to lose a bit of cargo. It's pretty awesome the caravans can get some really nice units in there. Okay. I really want that. Now, who are you still at war with? Have you picked up any more enemies? Just me. Beautiful. <laughs> Fine. Hmm. 
Wait a second, is he peaced out? Have they peaced out? They have peaced out. That means your only target is me. That means that you're coming this way. So I have a chance of ambushing your army. If you want to come this way. Which you almost certainly do. Okay. Keep on trying to earn that ambush of traits. I'll move, keep him down there actually because this line of sight is quite useful. I'm not afraid of being overrun by them, but gotta keep our eyes open. So the Hell Cannon was a, a unit that we agreed that we could recruit. So once we do have a level 3 forge building, we can get it. We can start saving up to upgrade our tower to tier 3. So we'll do that. Let's save up for that tier 3 tower. It's one of the reasons you don't like Norse or Greenskins. You're supposed to confederate the other lords, but you snowball like crazy. Yeah, it's, a, it's the biggest problem of it is uh, I think the, the thing is right I think they need to look at the reason why people confederate people don't confederate to take the territory people confederate to take the lord so I think having a system where basically fuck off confederations can all, all together right but you can have military alliances but you can control that lord their skill tree and you get like say 50% of that benefit something like that right but anyone can do that if you could have that, then I think, and that was the system across the board, it'd be way more palatable. Because people confederate, and then they quit their campaigns because there's just too much going on. And we landed our ambush, guys, so let's auto-resolve that, because ambush is very, very favoured to the ambusher with auto-resolve. That's a good amount of gold, so I'll take that. Now we're stretched thin because we can't build goblins. If we could build goblins, we could defend this and easily take that other settlement, but our challenge is biting us in the arse here. But that's why we did a challenge, right? The snowball problem is very uh, common among strategy games. I do agree. It is... It's really difficult. It is. Uh, it's, um... Okay. Astrograph. I don't know why I don't have movement <laughs> route much yet. Let's get that. Okay, and Solar Defender. Keep buffing up that melee defense. Sweet, and the same deal here. Right. We must run. Let's have a look at their balance of power. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that first army was really nothing to what they actually controlled. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, it looks like we'll be taking these guys down. Uh, let's build. I think to keep the cost down, we just might need Chaos Dwarfs. Let's get him closer. Make sure that we get those reinforcements. Don't want to give up the ambush just because we're too far away. Uh, about there. Duck, draw, draw. And you can draw it on the next turn. Kalan, Kazakh flag. Be nice to recruit. Enough. Maybe we should recruit. I'm kind of worried we're going to get beat up otherwise.
Let's do it. Let's recruit. Doom skull key. It's getting spicy. Speaking of confederations, you were playing as Drazoth the other day and used the tab to confederate Astrogoth. You were sorely uh, disappointed to have gotten his units, but not caps. Ah, uh, that's that's an interesting point. That is an interesting point. I see. I, I assumed it would be like the Empire that you wouldn't get their caps, but you could get their units, kind of like heroes and whatnot. Yeah, that that's an interesting point. Let him speak. Poor Conclave influence. Man, you can't can't say no that Conclave influence. It's just too good. It's just too good. But yeah, the, the confederation. Oh, the, oh that'll make confederations so you can't get them till the late game. I think that's maybe the better way to do it. So it's a natural progression in the game. Right, what are we gonna get? Uh, settlement buildings get twenty five percent more gold. Isn't bad, but fifty percent movement after winning a battle is okay. Casualty replenishment is quite nice, so we'll take that. Cool, it's worth it. We're about to be doing some fighting. I wish we could get that ambush stance. So what you typically want is that ambush stance so they attack and they can't see the reinforcements. But we can't pull that off. Alright, let's move over. These guys can't do the move either, sadly. Alright. Shoot the log, better roots. I refuse. Assume more angers, lock. Well, we're just gonna have to chill this turn, really, because we can't. <laughs> Dumfoundancy. Yeah, that's it. Alright, so let's just hop into ambush stance. We need this guy to get into ambush stance, but he's. Threatening our territory is too much, so we can increase our winds of magic. Very nice to do. Happy with that for now. We don't want our uh, our incomes kind of as high as we can really afford right now. Next turn we'll have the raw materials to upgrade our main building there. Not worth upgrading the factory yet, although getting walls in there would be nice. I would like to get walls in there if we could. Or we can increase the public order, but it doesn't build, build walls in there anyway, so. You know what, let's just build the public order. And get more gold. Why not? We're not losing those. You would have even settled for get some starting caps or anything that he got from every four turns, or get a random cap seat that he held. Yeah, how late are we talking? Turn 80, turn 100. Funny enough, it is exactly turn 80 when you got uh, the tower to confederate Astagoth. I think turn 80 is a good time to really call this is the end game. This is where you should be really hitting turn 5 in a big way. Like, I think that's a good point. I think maybe sooner, 70 or 65. I got it in... I, I powered through it though, like I... I deliberately tried to power through it, and even then, it's not the fastest way you could do it, but I think I I got them all like turn 70 something, but I was trying to do it because I was trying to learn the faction and see what could be done. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it like that. But like that's when I was still learning. I didn't realize uh, that these uh, bonuses that you get when they're all complete, you don't need to own all of it, you just need one seat in there and you will get that entire district's bonus. So. You actually incentivize to put one seat in each district and then get your share of that bonus. But I didn't know that until it, it says it there, but I didn't read. <laughs> didn't read. Uh, let's have a look. Get more armaments. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll move our way up here. There's nothing too serious that I'm after. We're, we're in no danger with War of Chaos Dwarfs, are we? Yeah, he won't declare war on us. I hope. We could give him a gift, but I'm too poor. It's a fun challenge, by the way. This one, I, I recommend giving it a go to uh, anyone that's felt that their first walkthrough was a bit too much of a stomp. Well, this actually paid off because he thinks I can't attack him here, but my other army can. And this is going to be a tasty little water resolve. Oh, he's doing it. He's doing it. Alright. Okay, we'll keep the money. He spent 20 to 30 turns in the beginning uh, derping out, not pumping influence and sacrificing uh, problem sagas. I never use these. Like, never. I mean, I probably should. I've probably got tons of... How many workers do I have? I probably should be using them. Oh, okay, well, it's already there. Yeah, I mean, I could. I probably should, because we're just burning through that. Yeah, actually, let's do that. I mean, we can increase our control. Hmm. Money's also nice. Let's get money. There we are. Using that money to increase pretty much everything, so. Gonna put this bull centaur down here to actually act as a scout because I'm a bit concerned. We could have a green skin stack approaching us at any time. I don't think he has a upkeep discount, not yet. Okay. Almost at level 12, guys. We can get his uh, unique tree once we get that. Now, what level are our dwarfs? See, they're level 6 now. So, it's actually... Well, I'm going to go all the way through to get this buff, which increases them at level 6 up to level 7. And once they're level 7, where are we, sorry? They'll get that extra 5 MLA attack and defense, and that is massive. And that'll give them 45 MLA attack, so they'll start hitting back decently. Now, here's a really good trick. So, for those that don't know, with the manufactory, with the infantry, you can give them frenzy. Now, frenzy is made for dwarfs. It is so good for them because as long as your leadership's above halfway, you get the buff, and that buff is another 10 MLA attack. So, your basic dwarf warriors are hitting with 50 as long as they're above 50 leadership. Sorry, well, 50% leadership, right? And they're doing 10% more damage. So, just don't let them break and they'll be hitting at that 50 leadership. So you can make them pretty good at grinding down the enemy. Let's quickly upgrade these guys. Uh, we'll go, let's make sure there's nothing better to get. Uh, let's get, I'll get piercing bolts because we might be doing a siege soon. And stalwart defender, cool. Income a bit of an issue. Getting a bit nervous with our lack of income. But we'll live. Oh, we need to build up some reserves. Okay. And done. Okay, what have we got here? The tower defense game in Planet Skulls. Uh, once you figured out, you could uh, spam it and accelerate your tower progression. They couldn't prolong uh, the campaign if they somehow made the AI more competent. I should, what? Remember when you beat the vampire counts and took the money? How much money you could get over five turns instead of uh, 100? Yeah, that's true, man. Yeah, yeah, cheers, man. It's also how you get ahead in the Conclave Influence race. I think it's easy to overlook, especially with the Warhammer 3 Dark I've experienced. The dictator system sucks. Labor sacrifice the dwarfs is much more important. That is true. 
I find you, you race your head in Conclave of Influence just by having capitals. Which we're totally not doing because we're playing so defensive here. Alright, so this guy we're going to have to do without. I really want him to come with us though, but... Alas, we cannot... Okay, can we move down a little bit further? There they are. I can get them just to come up a little bit closer. Wreck them, heal, wreck them, heal, take that, take that, and then hopefully come home for dinner, and then waste Grimgore. Ideally. Hey, we've got our new um, Castellan. Now this guy gives us more loot and good stuff, but he also has good defensive stats. Which early on might be nice, but I'm too greedy. I like money. Love to get that to tier to tier three. Mm, two more turns away, and then we'll get it. Okay, how many how many dwarf warriors can we get? None yet. Let's get one blunderbuss, one regular dwarf warrior. Eventually, these early tier units will be able to spread between our other units. Uh, I'll get one of. Not the great weapon, just regular. Oh, I'm too poor. No. That's not cool. They might come attack, so. Let's be careful. I need money. <laughs> well, every, I'll take 2%. I'll take what I can get. Hey, got the ambusher trait. That's great. So another five percent chance to success, and another ten percent to defense. Very nice. Anfa Grimazul. Okay, let's get it. We're gonna take this now. Boomlet. I'm gonna bring this bull centaur back home. Oh, I can't get in there. Damn it. Dantalas! Aula de Fashwa. Gata Kroom! If this is. Okay. They still have a decent presence. But I can handle it. Right, so okay with that. That's her. How much of that? Six hundred to hire. Expensive, even just to hire, aren't they? Oof. What does this do? If if we hire, if we get this frenzy ability, it takes 48, 48 of our armaments per turn. Now, what else can we get with that? We could get another ball center or Torok. That's what it's holding us back from. So I'll hold off until we can get that. Still a few turns away, but I think it's worth it. Because it basically would halve this. our potency. When we go to attack that settlement, that's when we'll do it. 
That's a lot of undead. Yeah, it is. It really, really is. But I just wish we had some more units to uh, beat them up with. Actually, I don't have that concern about the army itself. It's the fact that these greenskins will just come up here and we have Grimgore as well. <laughs> oh, fuck off, man. Ugh. Cannot get ahead. Oh my god, they might sack that. Okay. Right, they got. Get down, kid. Oh boy. Oh, it's just you just can't get ahead, man. I really want, like, really, really want to go take this. But every time I do, Grimgore comes up. I mean, the good thing is we're getting level up on our on our lord by doing this, but. God damn it, it's slowing progress to a grinding halt. Okay. Alright, maybe we need a bit more visibility down here. Okay, we're gonna get more armaments. 10% more armaments. It's not 13, so that will make getting this upgrade a little bit easier. Okay. Grimgore wants the expandables back. He does. He's come to liberate his friends. Use the underway stance more. Not a bad idea. I was thinking of... Uh, we could... One thing we could do is we could try to underway there and let them attack us with the whole garrison and everything, but poof, it's a risky battle. <laughs> he wants the expendables back. It would be good to underpass. Uh, the problem is every time we do, they underpass back and it's hard to spy on them because they're coming through the mountains here, not up through the land, so it's not like by spying better we'll see them coming. So where's he gone to now? Uh, he's going to follow the same pattern as he did before, right? He's up here. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Okay. Let's use another spy. I do not like the fact I can't work out where he's gone. Where would he have gone? Okay. Assume more Anka's luck. I need to speak up. Actually, can we peace out with any of these guys? If I peace out with you, that fixes most of my problems, not. I hunt. More sleep grows, I can tell. You come okay. thinking to bargain, but I have already. Man, I would just love to hire some goblins. We could beat the shit out of these guys, the goblins. So seriously. Or we make it expendables for us with this guy and a bunch of throwaway dwarfs. That would be fun, actually. We could do that, and he could basically murder this entire garrison. So tempted to do that. Alright. Oh, convoy to be dispatched. Need raw materials. Gold for raw materials, please. Alright, who has a better deal than that? Yeah, Black Crag, that's good. Perfect. No goblins run, then deploy the spiky stunties. 100%. Good to see you, Jason. I mean, the good thing is we're, we're alive and doing well. I didn't really have a plan for this, and... Oh.
And that is our convoy, guys. And that would be that army that we're chasing down. Not much army replenishment. Take that gold, but man, that army's gonna have a pretty sore time getting to its destination. Oh, this is our... No. What's that caravan? Hmm. We're gonna get wrecked. But can we break some of their nice toys? I don't think we'll be able to. Fuck it. If there's anyone here that hasn't seen the new big toys yet, we could try that. Convoy battles honestly seem to have really bad auto resolve. Uh, usually looks a little bad, but very easy to use your high quality units to massive advantage. I agree with you, Hawkeye. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, not the best, not the best example of a, of a nice fair convoy battle. Alright, now we've got a Kadai Destroyer, but without the upgrades and, and, and technology on it, it's not going to do all that much. Now, there, for those that are wondering how do you use these guys properly, in the Forge there's an upgrade which allows you to have no... basically makes them unbreakable, and that stops them from falling apart. The, the problem that they have stock standard, as soon as they go below half health, they pretty much get banished, demon style. Whereas if you can prevent them from uh, falling apart at half health, they do alright. Alright. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Fuck it. We could... Uh, I don't want to corner cap it, but... There we go. Back to the mountain. If we had a caster, oh, the damage we could do. Even the Lord of her should, we could really wreck this army. But our job now is they're killing our caravan, so our job is to kill as many of them as possible. And then Asgoth is going to, sorry, Astrogoth is going to pay them a visit in a couple of turns and take their capital. This guy's going. All right, last stand, guys. Let's make it count. Charge. Shred him. This is good though. This is the kind of units that we want to be completely removed from the equation. Go on, keep shooting. Keep shooting. So we that really high physical resist. Oh, let's charge into him. Maybe there's an opportunity to soften them before the big siege. This is 100% what I'm using that for. Oh, big mammoth's getting scared. Man, come on, blunderbusses. Probably my fault they're in the way a bit. It's a big target. So what we're aiming to do is completely destroy key units. Big challenge. Oh, come on. The big challenge we have is our blunderbuss units are what do the majority of our damage and they're mostly destroyed. 
to kill those Cryptoras, but we won't be able to. These guys are anti-infantry, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, here we go. You got a shot. Shot the big guy. Ah, oh, fuck. I left my flank open. <laughs> no, damn it. Rookie move. Rookie move. I was just having to sleep. Oh, we hit fast forward here. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, well done. Nice flank. That was really well done. Yeah, there we go. There's the Kadai. Oh, well, as soon as they get to roughly half health, they're just going to stop trying all together. Could I have magical attacks? That's why, um... Why attack the extra nice. Yeah, actually, that would have been a really good pairing. That's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah, that would have been a really good matchup. Well said. Definitely a missed opportunity. I don't think it really would have helped us too bad, too much in this case, in the overall scheme, but we would have, would have saved some hit points on our, uh, on our mammoth. Yeah, I mean, it was a bit too busted up here too. But we killed a couple of units completely, so that's what we're really after doing here. With an army like this, they got a lot of chaff. And they'll just resurrect most of those shitty units anyway. So we go. There's a couple of elite units that are gone. Would have been good to get those corpse carts. Um, if we'd had some more health on those blunderbusses, would have been able to focus down those lords. But it's good. At least that's one less uh, big unit that's gone. Although I wonder if we'd auto resolve, we probably would have wiped out a fair amount. Of, oh, we wouldn't have wiped out too much actually. Hard to tell. Big units are weighted quite well with auto resolve, and zombies not so much, but it's hard to tell. It would have either done really great or just not enough, but they'll replenish most of those over the end turn. Ugh. Don't declare war. Oh, thank Christ. <laughs> thank you. Uh, you know what? I would like to trade. Shall we trade spices? Beard oils? Whatever you want. You're the only friend I have. Okay. Man, I would love some artillery. Oh, would that be nice? Okay. We are doing this. We're going all out. We need to do something. And we're going to do it now. We might lose a settlement, but... Such is the nature of progress. Okay, so we'll need to hire everything we can. So, gotta make sure we can afford the recruitment we can. We've got two grand. We can get... Or one of those, and one of those. Okay. Now, this will take us right to the brink of what we can afford. And that's all right. 
hopefully we don't have to disband our loyal orcs here because I think they'll be the difference between us making you know what we'll, we'll give them the name let's give them the name Da Expendab Balls <laughs> there we are rank 5 well done lads you really, really like the uh, helmets of the iron guard and uh Infernal Swarm, uh, you know what I mean. Lance Swarm and Infernal Guard. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I like the way that they've done the um, the helmets and the hats, honestly. I think that it's good they have different um, helmets and just different garb that mean different things. I do like the, the lore around the Iron Swarm. Are you really trying this again? Good. And they've stopped war with these guys, so I think over time, they don't have anything in common. But me signing this will help that. Oh. Ah. Oh, man. You're a tough rat to barter with. There we go. So we're making an extra, what, 130 per go uh, turn from trade now, so that's great. Isn't some semblance of the Expendables an actual Orc Goblin <laughs> ROI? Yeah, maybe. 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 We could keep working up that way, but now when you are expanding normally, especially this one is actually really worth it because you build a lot of outposts. That's a really nice one to get. I think we'll need some more military. That's just for increasing capacity. I mean, that's still pretty good. Maybe it is worth getting. More campaign movements, always nice. A lot of this stuff is actually much more useful if we're playing normally. Uh, man, I cannot choose. I cannot choose, so let's go. Lord and Hero recruits not that important. There are some nice ones up here. Sorry about the exploration here, guys. We'll need to hire more troops. Oh, it looks like you are in a pretty bad spot, guys. And. You took one of their settlements, but it took everything you had. Okay. No one there. Hopefully. No one up there. So that's as good as it's going to get. They can make that far. They can make that far. Join him. Ah, I can't make it, but that's okay. We'll move this guy. Yep. The vampires don't have any type of ambushing ability, so they can't separate our armies. And that's pretty good. They're going, they're going to swarm us, but we're good for it. We can do that. And just in case. We're going to slap this uh, Frenzy ability now on top of all our Dwarf Warriors. It will burn off some of our armaments, but we can remove that later. We can slap a few other abilities on, but... 
this will be a lot of prolonged fighting. But they can't really hurt us. Actually, we can get ones for the blunderbusses as well. We can have some fun here. What can we get on the blunderbusses? Over there. Uh, we can replenish ammo, stalk, extra powder. I mean, that is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. We don't need it. So I won't, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> it really makes me want to do it. Uh, those are six coins that are going to be snowball uh, much later. Yes, they will. They're called the Job Squad. The WWF. Uh, WWF is what WWE is called now. Other way around. Other way around. That's my bit of trivia for the night. Ah, uh, you want peace, don't you? Not so tough anymore. Oh, no. Oh, you dick. Oh, man, I so deserve that. Anfa Adrimazu. Stars. Oh, man. It's a shitty army. There is that. That's a shitty settlement. Two, four, six, seven. Oh man, it's such a crap army. Like it's so easy to beat. Here's the thing, if I can beat it without needing my main army, we are made. Can't afford a lord. If we win this battle, we afford the lord that we can use to hire there, and I can hire some regiments of renown. And that fixes that problem. In that garrison, we've got not a lot of good units though. It's got the corpse cart and some crypt ghouls. You know, fuck it, we need to start taking some risks. I said we'd need to start taking some risks, so it's about time we did. We should be able to take that in a single turn as well. And they still have an army though, so I've got to make sure I don't lose this army. So let's not get too impatient with that. Well, that's an easy order resolve, so we'll do that. So we could spend some Conclave influence to level it up, but... This would allow us to start building the tier 2. Do we actually need it? Yeah, we do. Normally I wouldn't do that, but in this case, I really need my sorcerers back again. I need to start leveling up these units. So we'll build this building again because we're one below our sorcerer cap. Okay, so that's the first step done. We didn't get bugger all goals from that though. It really didn't help much. We need fire because we're fighting the undead. Ambush defense chance. Alright, so we're just going to go this guy. Insufficient funds. Now, I could possibly get some funds 
by taking one of these settlements. The problem is, is we will burn through our troops. <laughs> you liked WWE so much when you were a child, you, you knew it was scripted. <laughs> scripted, never watched again. Oh uh, man, all TV and movies are fake. <laughs> WWE is just a bit more obvious about it. I'll have your soul. You they, uh, they're gonna come back, but they've got nowhere to go, so they kind of have to kamikaze into that. Do I think I could win that? I don't think I can. It'd be close though, but I don't think I can. Here's the thing, I want him to come down this way. I could hide in ambush stance. I wonder if he's going to return back to this province here. There's a decent chance of that. We can retreat safely if he does go after us. I'm not going to hide because I want to be seen. Oh my god, I hope this works. But cool, we got level 12, we got his unique trio uh, powered up. And I know this is crazy. But, is there anything that's more important? That will give us some money back. Oh, that's really good too. This would increase a Chaos Dwarf uh, hero. Uh, sorry, a Chaos Warrior melee ability a lot. But now we're getting some serious level ups. We're basically in the driver's seat now. That has essentially secured us the campaign. Uh, why not peace out with them? You, you still... They still might find someone to suicide with and it won't be you. That's actually a pretty good point. There is desperation in your pitiful eyes. That knowledge alone will be leveraged against you. I'm so greedy. I'm so greedy. I just want to... I want to kill them. I want what they have, but... You make a good point, Hawk. You make a good point. Actually, it could be a spectacular fight though, but if he does win it, I'm in some serious fucking trouble. Oh, he does have another army there, so that is a concern. Yeah, right. He's going to send all those guys down to the bottom and take out those goblins, so... That will work for us. We can now finally attack Grimgore. Yes! The stream makes you want to try uh, Chorps again. Gunpowder army is not really a thing. Maybe you can go melee heavy. You can go whatever you want with our uh, Chaos Dwarfs. That's the best thing about them. You can go melee heavy, you can go artillery heavy. Um, Gunpowder is, I think gunpowder is kind of addictive in a way, like once you start to get the the results and that satisfaction from when it works really well, it's it's really, really fun. Like every time it, it you play it out and you get decisive results with it, it feels very earned. At least that's how I feel. It's a quest battle, is it? Ooh. Cool. Well, when we have a quiet turn, eventually. Oh no, they lost their capital. Ready. 
Okay. Now we need to double check that we're not getting attacked. By freaking Grimgor. Who is now called a war? On our capital. Okay. Take this guy out. Money was going backwards. Alright, so we're going to underpass up this way. We're bringing our primary army to bear against Grimgore. We're going to send our secondary army down here. And they are just going to hold the line here and just basically stop these guys from invading. Hopefully they'll be the check against them. At least for now. If we, the, the, the problem with this restriction, right, is that the dwarf units are really expensive and it's stopping us from fielding two full armies. Normally we'd be able to field two uh, full armies here and use that secondary army to go down here, particularly with the Gordas as well. Um, this bottom section would be very easy to take. I'm thinking of taking it anyway. Thinking about it, of course I'm going to take it. I can't resist that. Yeah. A good call on the piece out though, Hawkeye. That's worked out very well. Hey, they got it back. Oh, they're fighting back. The zombies are not done yet. So. Bring me flesh to craft. Don't mess with me. Ah, so this guy, if he can come down here. Just need a couple more units. I just wish I just had one or two more. I know I could take anything these guys can throw at us, but... It's just that concern. Waddle! So they're in ambush. Alright, time to take the, the fight to Grimgore. Oh my god. I am told you what Just in time, these guys are getting No, they're not getting wrecked, they're doing okay. They've got five settlements left. We're gonna need everything we can get against Grimgore though. His his army does not look like any slouch. Okay. Two units in there. This is a pretty good army to take on, on Grimgore though. We can check most of what they do. Quite reliably. Okay, that's only iron and timber. And go to sorcery. We're about to uh, make contact with all the other Chaos Dwarf Lords, so we don't want them to declare war on us. And that'll get us towards some other technology, so it seems pretty good to me. Right, iron will give us even more armaments. Uh, we need to make sure that our raw materials won't go down too, too harshly. It's a pretty weak hit. You do have to consider that. If we do get this, it's going to really slow our ability to upgrade these main buildings. So I'm not going to build that just yet.
we will need more gold to afford the upkeep, so I'm happy to get that. Yeah, right. Uh, what's our labor count at? Labor is looking pretty good. Get another 10 Conclave influence. But I think we're looking good. Uh, we're going to be having lots of fights soon anyway, aren't we? So... Let's get Conclave influence. We'll get that next turn. Cool. I like it. Looking good. Come on, Grimgore. History matters. Whose side are you on, mate? <laughs> oh, we're going to be fighting him. There's no doubt about that. It's, uh, it's certainly happening. The challenge has been fun, though. It does remind me of those really hard Warhammer 2 campaigns where you don't have enough money for a good army. Kind of like Imric. It's like Imric back in Warhammer 2. Where you can handle each situation, but you just can't get to those situations in time. Oh, that's why I failed. That is just heartbreaking. We've got uh, military access for these guys, so we can march our armies over. But we got to make sure that one army can handle at least two of his, because... It's going to need to deal with that and some. Hmm. I need more units, I need more gold. Stretch so thin. The expendables are becoming an integral part of our team. I wish I could just hire that great Taurus. Got 150. Yeah, I'm not that eager to get that. It's it's not bad. But there's other upgrades here. Yeah, some of these are really good, like this bombardment. We'll save up for that. Look at that. And we'll hire one more. Sending is broke, but we don't have much choice. Now, we're not going to fight too much armor. And that's the only thing I'd be really be too concerned about. But I think a great weapons version, as an offensive infantryman, could could be of use to us. Taumancy. So the reason why this is so risky is we we're, we're underpassing to get there, but we leave ourselves completely open, and we don't have walls on these settlements. Getting this bottom settlement here was actually quite useful because that's a capital. That's capital, that's a capital. Quite secure across here, but this is our soft underbelly now. What we're trying to do is get across and smash him and his, and that will, if we can cripple his armies, Kolek Sarnita will come in and sweep over the top. Since I beat the shit out of you, you've been pretty good. Is that Boris? If you send him too broke, it'll ruin him. So we we actually don't want him to... <laughs> Fucking hell, Kislev are doing really good. How's this, guys? We've got a minor faction and Boris on our doorstep. What is happening? Uh, famous Ziggy. Uh, love gobos. I forgot uh, <laughs> so much you forgot Chaucer exists. Thanks very much for the super chat, mate. I uh, appreciate that. And I uh, hope you're having a good weekend. So thank you. Although I do love how they introduce Gordaz into the game. I think what they did with Gordaz is exactly the type of game design they should do if you 
you're not you're meant to move away from goblins quite early, but if you want to play goblins, you love hog goblins, they give you one lord that can make an army all about that. So I love how they give players that choice and that variety. Let's move up. Hmm. Stroll hurry. That's a bit dangerous. Okay, we'll upgrade that. I think we have enough to upgrade our capital. We don't. That's alright. But we can also get a sorcerer. Give this guy one. Nice, and increases uh, leadership of Chaos Dwarf Infantry. Very good. Oh shit. <laughs> well, we know they have to have an army there. Like, that is a given. So let's intercept. Cool. We need to ensure that we'll be alright. Let's have some fun. One of them can have the shotgun, one can have the sniper rifle. We've got two infernal castellans, so we may as well take them up. Give it a bit more bit more bite in Malay with some extra armor piercing damage. Uh, next campaign, slaves only. <laughs> that way you have to play Greenskins. Uh, History Matters is a devout Greenskins fan and uh, I will be so so proud to be able to give you that, that guide when we eventually get to it. But as you can see we're dabbling in Greenskins now mate. We're getting there. The dream is happening. And I will get this because it will slow down our slave production. Let's make sure it's not a stupid move to make. Okay. Either way, it's two turns to get to that. That's cool. Are these guys at war with anyone? Can you please join this war against Grimgor? Oh, you're afraid of him. You know what? I get why. But wait, if you can join the war against these guys. You guys are pussies, man. Come on. Really? What are you doing? I'm wasting money on this army. It's not strong enough to do anything. Not weak enough to... Uh. The infamous flip, I end up uh, crap stacking low tier units so often because you're impatient. I won't lie, it's satisfying being an in-game army by just drowning it in garbage. I think some factions that's just kind of their jam as well with um, you know vampire counts, I think I like that. Skaven to some degree, but they mix with their heavy, heavy units. I think that is one of the reasons why I do like playing Legendary very hard because you need to make those smaller armies count for more I find uh, especially in Warhammer 2 you had to because of the supply lines um, you had to Ooh. wound him for some armaments I can't afford to lose anyone we need all hands on deck we have a quest over here and we can get a thousand gold. And you know what? A thousand gold is pretty damn hard to come by currently, so I'll take that. Concerning. 
Oof. Now we've got the armaments. We're lacking the gold to support this. We knock down this and we'll build the gold building there. That'll help a bit. Okay. I should have done that last turn. That's a mistake. But we'll live. Uh, I think, yeah, brilliantly stupid did do goblins only. Go funnily enough, goblins only is actually much easier than dwarfs only for this particular campaign because you can get early reach earlier on. This is really hard because you just can't fucking afford anything. But this is also a legendary as well, so you've got more places to be at once. Um, you do notice that... Yeah, I mean, you'll have like one army over here and then they'll just send two more the other way. So if you haven't noticed, this entire campaign, we're going back and forward and back and forward. Um, just, but the thing is, you have to do that because if they start sacking your settlements, they never rank up. And that's a huge trap that I, when I very first started playing Total War, I'd let, I'd be like, eh, it doesn't matter if they sack that here and there. But if your settlements aren't leveling up, you'll never get ahead, like militarily or financially. At least your meanings, meaningful settlements, you need to spare them from getting wrecked. Okay. We'll take that next turn. Oops, I didn't mean to click that. <coughs> but I did see his video. His video is good. All his videos are good, actually. He does a really great job of um, condensing his campaigns into like 20 minutes. It's a hard thing to do. He does that really well. Um, although this campaign type, total credit to Mercy the Mad. Mercy the Mad's the <laughs> popularizer of uh, all sorts of kooky campaigns. We can get more gold. I normally don't build this refinery building. I'm actually normally a staunch, a po staunch opposer of the refinery. But we're that desperate for raw materials, right? For gold, we actually need to do it. I can't believe I'm actually doing it. For the longest time, I've said we you, we just don't need it. We'll probably have to knock it down soon, but... Yeah, I just don't like the refinery. It's just... it's. I only ever use this if I'm producing super, super bulk raw materials. It's otherwise is really kind of a step back. Because this one building will get us back in front. I'm holding off on the refinery because when we upgrade this building, it'll give us, what, an extra... It takes nine turns to do... Uh, not gonna rush it. Not gonna rush it. We'll be okay. How many turns does this gold building take? It takes two turns. That'll give us another 200. That'll give us an extra, like, couple hundred, so we'll be okay. We'll be okay. But one thing we will need is another blunderbuss to deal with these goblins, so that's in the works. We've got some pretty critical fights coming up. I'm loving this campaign. Anyone that wants to try try something kooky out, this is actually really fun. Really liking the challenge. Uh, it must be a lot harder than goblins only, at least you can recruit. Yeah, honestly, goblins are... Goblins are really good in the early game. They, they're kind of the backbone of your army. They're, uh, you, your early armies really do start off with a few stone centers of dwarfs and then everything else can work around that. And goblins are flexible too. If you want to be really stealth based, you can use the sneaky gits. If you want to be more archer based. Um, the archer unit's really good as well. Uh, it's got pretty damn good stats. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh man. Oof. Oh 
god damn, that is... That is a spicy army. That's a very spicy army. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Doomleth. Uh, 15 versus their 20. And they have goddamn trolls. Doomfaumancy. Right, we'll deal with that in a minute. Let's let's deal with the fun part. Oh my god, there's another army. Alright, we can squash that. Okay. Let's double check their bounce power. It's gone down a little bit. How do they look? Now compared to Kerlex, Kerlex lost his army somewhere along the way, and his vassal has lost some territory. So Kerlex is really depending on us to take care of his problems. Take what's theirs. They've lost all their army. Yeah, so Kerlex, Kerlex is in a bad way. Kerlex really wants to be friends with us. We also need some workers to help make up those raw materials. How much better could we do that? We get so much experience from, from hammering it all though. Ugh. But we lose them. All right, we got to fight. If they're going down, they're going down live, right? These guys are stuck with it for so long. The expendables are going out on their own terms. Some terrain we can work with here. A couple of gorges. So we need to make sure our blunderbusses have a maximum opportunity with these. Classic chores do love their laborers. We're gonna try something fun here. We're gonna go for a gun line setup. Keep Castellans at the front. One there. Go the other one. Oh, where are you? Over here. Holding the line. Cavalry out here. We'll keep the cavalry in the reserve, actually. All you guys can be number two. You should be number three. to go out is uh, number one. And our caster is number two. As usual. Alright, so in reserve we're going to have our uh, great weapons. And then at the very front we'll just have our blocks of uh, dwarf warriors. Now hopefully we can lose most of our volleys or our blunderbusses without anyone getting close. Cool. So this flank here is the only thing we're worried about, but it doesn't matter because we have the Expendables. Da -da, come on lads. What are you now? You're rank... rank 5. They do look pretty badass. Even though they're uh, not free, they look pretty badass, don't they? Uh, my old friend, you have served the fate if I faithfully. You'll be forgotten almost immediately. I like that. Thank you for writing that speech. Uh, five for biting. I believe you named them as well, so it's like uh, watching your kids grow up and they're ground into paste for the greater good. Let's fight! Come 
It doesn't make sense to throw them in front though, but th th they'll get their chance. All right. Oh, that's right. They've got uh, they've got the artillery advantage. I forgot about that. This guy on foot still. He's on foot. All right. We need uh, Robo Dwarf. So we'll throw uh, our centaurs, sorry, centaurs, bull centaurs, on the flanks because I want them to uh, spin around and take out their range units. Oh, they're magic. Oh, let's see what happens if we overcast this. Does this do any good damage to? Uh, Mate, that was the worst shot of anything I've ever seen. What was the point of that? So proud, Sniff. It's been a, been a big day for him. Okay. Well, yeah, we can we can uh, watch the pass. With these guys. Oh, they're splitting their forces up pretty well. See so what they're doing? Pretty good job. Oh shit. That's exactly what we didn't want, so let's make sure these this terrain's actually quite difficult to uh, work our way around. Okay. We are getting beat up a bit by that. Okay, I think we'll win this quite handsomely, but I'm worried about these units getting uh, getting surrounded. Come on. Come on, break, 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 fuck. Come on. Get out. Alright. What's their speed? Their speed is 60, ours is 70. We've got this. Okay. All we have to do is just tie up those uh, artillery pieces and stop them from firing. That's literally our goal. Come on. Oh, what are you doing, mate? You know what, I could even justify that hero staying there to hold all those guys up. I just hope he lives. He's the newer one, so he doesn't have all the wicked stats. Alright, so we'll take guard mode off so he stays fixated on killing them. Alright, move. Alright, they're getting shot to shit. Let's widen their line so they get a little bit less from that artillery. Okay. Get charging the river trolls. Come on. Yeah, he's doing okay. So we've got that uh, full centaur Taurus up there doing a great job holding the line. Probably should have got those uh, blunderbusses a little bit closer. Oh, come on. Come on. Take it out. Don't get distracted, lads. You've got one job. Okay. That's when you're broken. One down. A shitload more to go. Okay. Burning head should do pretty good. Is that going to bounce? Didn't? That's okay. Now it'd be tempting to run straight in there, but yes, it did bounce. Oh no! It's bouncing too far! Run! Run, dwarfs! Oh! Oh, what a travesty. Alright, where are the expendables? Out of reserve you come. The mighty charge. Okay, cool. At least we stop the. Uh, we can move these guys up. At least we stop the artillery from shooting. And this is a great position to be in. Most of our units will beat theirs 
in any given engagement, and that's exactly what we want. Charge in. Got great weapons now, charging into the flanks. Doing some nice charge damage. Oh, a bit of friendly fire. about the friendly fire but a good burning head is a good burning head. Should have done that first. Should have cast uh, Ash Storm and then cast Burning Head. That would have absolutely wrecked them. Alright, let's uh, pay attention and actually get these shots off. We've got so many good opportunities. I'm going to come around the flank here because we don't want these guys to block that line of sight. You know, actually, we'll send these guys up here. We know we can win that fight. Let's just keep them where they're strong. And these guys are just using their shields for now. So the fact that they're not letting anyone else get hit is kind of okay. Right. You know, we, this is actually the best use of our, uh, our orcs is actually to chase them off the field. So keep running. Sorry about my voice, guys. It's, it's uh, she's going a bit. Now, it's burning head. Let's say this will give us the army losses. We've got a bit more beat up than I would have liked during that fight, but we did save the expendables. Chase the trolls off the map, they're a bit dangerous. He's holding off like three units of uh, orc boys, not a problem. One unit to these archers. Yeah, we'll send the other ones just up there, that's, that's fine. Give them fire attacks. Bit extra kick. Okay. Okay, we should be able to shred this last unit that's not broken here. The last few units, I should say. So what I'm doing here is I'm making him attack. This one here, I'm holding Alt to move him up. So make sure his arc will cover all these guys. And just let him have free reign on what he wants to do. Now, I don't want them to shoot these guys, so I'm going to send this Castellan into in melee combat to push them back. Alright, let's pay attention. Okay, attack, and you guys can just charge up here. So often with the archers, you just want to try to push into them, run into them, and force them to uh, to flee and retreat back. Good. Take guard mode off so they chase them down. Okay, keep shooting. Just keep shooting. No, fuck it. Ooh. Yeah, we can basically win that entire unit. That is so close to army losses. So what I'm trying to do there is just destroy as many units as I can quickly. Now these unit, this unit's getting beat up a bit too much. I don't want them to die for obvious reasons. They've got a lot of experience. Their expense is held high in the first place. And the rest of our army's basically got this. So we'll bring these units up. Fireball onto that unit. It'll probably miss actually, maybe that wasn't the best idea. Okay. Those missiles, yeah mate, they were... <laughs> Those, that was the worst missile shot I think I've ever seen any unit do. Oh, I don't want this guy to die. He's, he has done such a good job. It doesn't look like it, but he has done such a critical job of keeping everyone else uh, held back. Because what he did was he killed, kept the enemy in place, allowing for the other bull centaurs to flank and take out their artillery. Hmm. I'm trying to work out why their army's not, not broken yet. Basically is. Oh, there it is. 
Uh, we can use Ash and Ash Storm, sorry, to slow this guy down. Obviously, killing his characters for the experience is uh, is our goal. Damn it. Come on, let's kill this guy at least. He's got a lot of good characters now, and that's what I'm worried about. Come on. Originally the Orc boys were a bit of a concern, but now our Dwarf Warriors are so well trained. Oh dude, come on guys. Man, you guys drink worse than the regular Dwarfs before you shoot, fuck. Another one down, and uh, I'm gonna get out of the spot before we do any more friendly fire because we just shredded them. Um, no, no, I was uh, I was making sure the characters die. You still get gold from uh, killing them after battle, though, don't you? Doesn't doesn't the gold get determined by the um, deaths after battle, or is it only after the? Um, once the battle ends, is that it? Do you know, Tackles? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it went okay. It could have gone a little bit better, but I was talking a fair bit through there too, so I guess... Uh And then the thing is, though, the stars, and the, they didn't lose a single guy. I am clearly doing this wrong when <laughs> the, the one guy I've been trying to get killed for so long is just having the time of their life. I think we'll need, as much as I'd love Conquer Clave Influence, I think getting in this tower. Tier, tier 2 and not spending the materials on it is maybe the better idea. Okay, cool. Gold. Here we can get that at tier 3, which we're getting close to. That's great. And here we can also get good old fashioned. Oh, not that. We want gold. Oh, it's leveling up already, so cool. Now this will give us armaments, but it'll take away raw materials. Ten percent more raw materials. An extra 60 will help. Okay. Deal. Okay. We'll just have to sit with that for now. And this is a pretty cool ability. I do like this. The Dreadquake battery could provide some value here because it neighbors everywhere we want to be and it's fun and I do like fun so fun it is fun's winning the day um, is a settlement battle or everything dies anyway yeah yeah it uh, turned out to be I did forget that tariffs aren't worth a huge amount at this point Increasing our relations with Chaos, I don't think is a huge issue. It's funny, normally I this there are tons of amazing options when you play as Chaos Dwarfs. This is quite an interesting dynamic because normally I would get this. 
I still think that's actually pretty good. Lowering the construction cost and time for outposts. That is pretty good. But we don't have the benefit. I think we need to focus on building upwards rather than out. Look at that for now. Can't afford anything else on the armaments front, so that's him done. Wicked, we've got two level ups there. So, first of all, where is it? So, this is what we're after. Lowering the Centaur render upkeep by tw uh, 20. It'll give us just a little bit back. But his best one, of course. Yeah, we've. We're going to have good relations with the Chaos no matter what, so this one here is excellent. Two capacity for all heroes. Okay. So extra 50%. Oh, I do like I do like the idea of the extra mass. That's kind of fun. So if this unit survives <laughs> Well if this army survives the upcoming siege He will gain the benefit of this guy. Alright. Regiments of Renown are coming out. It's getting real. It's getting real, so let's move out less than 50%. See if we can see anything else. We can't see shit. No worries. Alright, we can't hire any basic troops. It's not allowed. We could spend some armaments boosting our ammo. Increasing our base missile damage. And now we're piercing our 30%. That is really good. It does turn our armaments down to an absolute standstill. But it's also really cool. <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. Why not? If we die... In the words of the Hound of Game of Thrones, dead men don't need gold. No point having gold if you can't live to spend it. Or if you don't get to live to spend it, I should say. Uh, I know I'm doubling up on the movement perk, I just... I'm tired. It's one point. <laughs> it's this way I can guarantee I have it. I'd rather waste a point and guarantee I've got the extra movement than not because movement is that important. You love Chaos Dwarf Diplomacy. You ended up with a defensive alliance with Miao Ying by trading a settlement with him. He had Jade Warriors in the army and seized the Great Bastion. That's awesome. That's <laughs> so funny. Okay, we are running drastically out of time to afford anything, but that's because of the regents are renowned. Once we get rid of those, we'll be able to replace them with hero units. So that's the idea. We can hopefully cycle them through, and that secondary army, by the time we get those heroes there, there'll be enough uh, gold production to build that army, and then he can take the south, and then we'll finally get some holdings. At that point, the campaign will basically be, not one, but um, there'll be nothing to worry about. We should have We've got good diplomacy with this middle faction here. We will have good diplomacy with Dravalot down the bottom, and we're pretty close to joining with Zartan. So we're besieged. Ah, damn it. I reckon I can win that. But, it would be a lot easier if defending it in the walls. And 
they'll hopefully. They will hopefully attack. Allow him to press us, uh, us to press our own advantage. Ah, uh, just out of reach. I am the Tempest. What could you offer me? I am tempted to gift him this settlement for a military alliance. He's, He's allies with God. Zartan, which is really appealing to me for obvious I reasons because I don't want to be there's no point being at war with Zartan we'll be able to confederate him through the tower later so hostility is a complete waste of time so we'll take this next turn and we'll gift it Ooh. I don't think he needs my help <laughs> I think he's got this It's risky, but I'm just going to underpass straight under into there. And pray that I can beat whatever he's got. But we have the expendables. They don't. Is there anything else we can do to get money? Nope. And only builds armaments. Okay. We're not broke yet. We're not going to scavenge for money just yet. We're doing okay. It doesn't matter if there's XP to gain, we just want to commit war crimes. <laughs> I like that. Hmm. Hey, Ungram. You wouldn't be thinking about, you know, declaring war, would you? Because I really can't afford another offensive front. Oh, did he back off because he was scared of them? You are not welcome, so I won't pretend. Didn't think you'd be friendly, but I also didn't think you'd be this hostile or successful. Hmm. I do get the feeling he might stop by, and that army is quite dangerous. And when I say quite, I mean very, very dangerous. Oh. Okay. We have options. I mean, a few extra heroes will help. They'll also send us broke very quickly. Do need to keep the gravy train rolling along. Uh, allied deployment, allied recruitment is so nice with uh, the Warriors of Chaos. The Alliance Holding Infantry fits dwarfs, uh, Chaos Dwarfs so well. That is actually a pretty cool concept. That would work really well. Now, they backed off. Why? Did they lose the fight? It doesn't matter because now Grimgore is weaker than us. But they're really weak. They did lose that fight. And there's the man himself. Ah, oh, the poor expendables took the brunt of that. Now, if I don't build a factory, 
I want to build an outpost because we need the outpost, but the factory will have the walls, so... We might need that more. Okay. We can still keep operating at a loss, and that's fine. Because he's coming for us. The question is, what else do does he have? Because he might have another stack. I do think Angram's coming for us. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go. Oh shit, that is tighter than I thought it would be. Okay, research. Moving our way towards um, getting some extra campaign movement. Very, very nice. And. The late defense, more important. If we break uh, Grimgore's army, that is him virtually finished. Now, if you're ever running really close to your budget like this, and you know that you might go below zero, just be careful that if you lose a settlement, you will lose all of that income. Uh, it's one thing to be really mindful of, because without that income, uh, it'll send you to the red, and you'll have your troops deserting you. So, uh, if you're parked in a settlement hoping to replenish, run out of cash because the settlement falls, things will go south really badly. Alright chat, do you want us to fight this? Do you want to see Grimgore go down live? 104 votes and the orcs are not sacrificed. I know, it's uh, you know what? We were waiting for this opportunity to sacrifice directly to Grimgore. This was purely for entertainment. For the Chaos Dwarf Lord himself. Now this time we will force them to run ahead. Doesn't matter if they're level 7. Hundred four votes. We'll be honored now. Oh man. I think the... The Orcs are really thinking this is a fantastic map for them to... Go for a run, you know? Okay, so we're just going to good old fashioned check aboard this at the front. Now, you notice the dwarf uh, warriors at the front here. I do start them thins to maximize that shooting opportunity, but we'll get them a bit broader as the enemy comes in. But you've got a very short range with these blunderbusses. So, we're really trying to make sure we maximize those. Guard this flank and now in reserve. We have great weapons for anyone that does come along. Right. Fire Wizard. Astrogath. Alright, um, you might see I, uh, I do like to run squads like this. I, it kind of reminds me of tabletop, but also it is quite useful. You saw how useful it was before. This guy was able to pin one unit these guys were able to come around and get the flank, so you can play a pretty good game of making your own hammer and anvil by bringing a, a general with them. Like, there's better uses for it, but it's fun. <laughs> so sometimes it's just fucking fun. Why, why are you playing a game to start with? To have some fun. Okay. Now see, this is where I think having some fire glaives would be useful because that extra range, you could check aboard them back like this. Um, I do intend to, to test that out a bit more. Okay. The 
Let's do it. Alright. Dark Spendables. Where are they? Where are they now? Ah, uh, here we are. Speed up, boys. <laughs> it was all up to me. Hey, Mercy, how you doing, man? Um, you don't think you can change, uh, take credit for the challenge? Oh, good to see you, mate. Hope you're doing well. Um, I don't know, I feel like you popularized this. Like, you're the first person I saw taking really wacky angles at... Um, our campaigns and trying to uh, turn them on their head, so with certain restrictions. Like you've did, done the no recruitment. Um, uh, check that out, by the way, guys. If uh, you haven't seen it before, basically Mad's done a a uh, no basically no recruitment. The only way you get you into the empire is by confederating. That's I haven't done it yet, but it looks really really fun. I really like the idea. So these are the expendables. They've been with us from the start. We're not allowed to hire any more green skins and. Uh, We said we sacrificed them, and it just never happened. Or they always somehow run away, <laughs> like so, before they made their maker. Oh, mate, they're getting chased now. Oh, traitors. And there he is, the best. He does look pretty badass. All right, better pay attention. All right, come on. Uh, great video on the line of slide update. Uh, you got another fan in there, Mercy? Rightly so. Um, I'm sure everyone here has uh, seen Mercy the Mad's channel. If you have not, please check him out. He's like the master engineer of uh, Total Warhammer. If you like to break the game apart and like work out, understand what uh, is actually happening under the hood, he's got some really good analysis on that. It's particularly useful because I'm pretty sure a lot of us don't know how half it works still. <laughs> it actually amazes me with the amount of modding this game has, how much is actually still somewhat of a mystery. Alright, so we're gonna move up. Okay. Alright, if we were paying more attention before, we should have uh, targeted these um, goblobbers. We don't have much else to kill, so I'm just going to use that. Uh, focus that down. You two move up this way. You guys, take that out. Yeah, Mercy's a really good uh, dwarf player as well, actually. Um, that's that's what uh, got me into your stuff, Mercy, was your uh, your dwarf content. And uh, Hawkeye's a really good dwarf player too, so... You guys are, do, have, do definitely have some similarities in... In taste... Uh, oh no! Let's uh, don't hit these guys. Do not want to struggle to go down, please. Uh, oh man, we're getting wrecked from this. I was just saying how tired I am, Messi. God damn, you must be uh, absolutely bloody naked. With the time difference in Melbourne now. Alright, 
let's uh, get these blunderbusters to focus on Grimgor. I saw you did, um, I'll, uh, I'll finish this battle for, uh, first, guys, I'm, uh, what the hell are you doing, mate? Oh, Grimgore's got spirit. gonna take some with him. Fuck! No! Oh, did he actually kill one? No way! Oh man, that's uh, pure recklessness. Oh no. Ah well. Uh, the mad scientist, 100%. Um, uncovering the great hidden truths. That was a fun campaign. Uh, catch you up. <laughs> Mercy and Insisty are the scariest campaign players. Pretty much uh, that stream uh, for him he needed is though. Berserk, Hadrian, Hadri indeed. <laughs> I like that. Best of uh, finding the, the game most amusing. I think that's like one reason why there are, you can have so many streamers in a game like this that do things differently. Like there's, there's, I, I, I put a lot of it to the fact that the game randomizes so so much um you, you can't do like a complete walkthrough each time you can give maybe the first five turns maybe uh but after that it's a lot of it's just kind of demonstration or just guidance or ideas of what to prepare and that's the best thing about it it's not like you pass a campaign once it just changes every time i think that's one huge element of the game i think everyone including myself take for granted is that every campaign can be so different I don't know many games that are strategy games where you actually get that level of replayability and variety without forcing it. You can play the exact same playstyle and still have a completely different experience each time. It's pretty crazy. You personally prefer the roleplay theme campaigns are the most fun? Our game sandbox? Yeah, I absolutely think so. There's definitely room for that. But, but my thing I wanted... Oh, no! Oh, that breaks my heart. Because I got lazy. Level 6. So close to that mighty level 7. Ah, oh, well. Ah, oh, man. We need the gold. Ah, oh, well. You fast forward, that's what happens. Um... Yeah, but yeah, role playing is you can do a lot more than people think. Like the when I started my camp, uh, sorry, a bit tired. Uh, when I started my channel, I wanted to just show that you can have fun on legendary. Like you can, you know, play on legendary without having to cheese the game. Like it's just not true that you need to do it. Like you just need to be you need to be really efficient and know your faction really well. That's true, but it is the hardest level of difficulty. There comes a point where it's like. Well, what do you expect? It's got to be hard. That's the, that's the whole point of difficulty. Crucially, the upcoming Age of Wonders 4 looks good. It could be amazing for some replayability with no campaign ever being the same. Yeah, maybe that's the way it'll go. Uh, having completely randomized things like the original Diablo. Every level, like such an old game, every level was, was randomized. Like the, the key characters would be the same. But the map was completely R RNG. Okay, so we're good. This guy is so coming for us. Right, we'll join these guys up. So they'll probably come through and attack them. Certainly win with that army of theirs. 
And I'm kind of inclined to let them do that. They can, they can keep that. That will complete our province. Do they have any more armies? They do. So we'll need to move up an ambush stance, but uh, I reckon it's pretty damn late and Hey, I'm off to bed too, Massey, so good night, my friend. You have a good sleep, and uh, it's even later there for you. So, yeah, you take care, and uh, also, everyone else, thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a really long time since the stream. Thanks for Mercy and for everyone for coming in and saying hi. I think... And the Expendables didn't die, so... I'm a dirty, filthy liar. I couldn't kill all the Greenskins. But uh, this is a really fun idea for a campaign, anyone that wants to try something that kind of feels like Warhammer 2 level difficulty because you just can't get around the map enough with not enough troops, I really recommend this and you could take it even to the next level by disbanding all these guys at the start or even loosen it a bit and um, lean into the two ways that you could loosen the rules is to either... Where are we? You could get, as people said, if you can see Chaos Dwarfs on the artillery, you can include those as well or you could just recruit up to these basic levels. You're just not, not allowed to level up with armament. So there's a few tweaks on it. I just did dwarfs and centaurs, nothing else, uh, and the heroes. But yeah, it's all yours. I um, hope everyone has an awesome weekend. Take care. This is Elvin, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you all. Uh, let us know in the comments uh, if there's any video ideas you'd like. All right, guys.